Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Uh, indeed, it's a great uh, Sabbath. We thank God for uh, having allowed us to uh, come here on this uh, Amos Sabbath. Um, uh, we are going to lead you through the worship uh, this morning uh, through music. Um, I'm here with uh, my brothers here. Um, on my right, I have Brother Moriasi. Uh, just say hi to the church. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Yes. Then on my, now that I said right, it was left. Now this is my left. On my extreme left, I have Brother Moses. Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy day. day. Happy day. Thank you. And next to Moses, I have Brother uh, Musa. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Welcome. Yeah, so I'd request uh, my Brother Moriasi to pray for us. Let's believe and pray. Father. We come on the, this good morning with thanksgiving, Father, for everything you've done unto our lives the whole week of this Sabbath. May thy name be glorified forevermore. As we worship you in songs and praise, may thy even Holy Spirit be filled in us and use us in a mighty way. For we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On the piano, sorry, I didn't say we have Brother uh, Joseph the and uh, with his brother, we... Uh, happy uh, that you're here with us. Our first song this morning is number 388. Don't forget, don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath. Song is song number 83 from the SD hymnal, 083. 
or worship the king. song is song number two one uh, song number two one uh, immortal uh, invis invincible he Tis 
Invincible God, only wise. Our next song is 507. Uh, 507 is uh, one of the greatest hymns, moment by moment.
Amen, amen. Our next song is Song 348, The Church Has One Foundation. Song number 348. song uh, is song number uh, 574. Uh, uh, 574 talks about, oh master, uh, let me walk with you. Stay and guide. 
teach me thy patience till we live in closer dear company is what the king's best sweet and soul in trust the trust Six one five talks about um, rise up, O men of God, rise up, O women, rise up, youth, and rise up, church. Rise up, O men of God, His kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and end the night of wrong. Let women all rise up, have done with lesser of the King of Kings. Rise up, courageous you, the charge for you doth win. Her strength unequal to the task, rise up and make a grace. Cross of Christ, tread where his feet are thrown. Disciples of the Son of Man, rise up, the church of God. Amen. Rise up, the church of God. I uh, will do um, our last song this morning. Uh, uh, that is song number. Uh, 618 stand up uh, stand up for Jesus stand up stand up for Jesus he soldier of the cross lift her his royal Yeah. 
shall be a we the King of glory shall reign eternally. Amen. We'll continue uh, uh, later. We welcome the next program. morning and it's a privilege to be here at the Lavington Church um, once again and to have an opportunity to um, share the Lord's word. So we're just going to have a short devotion but maybe before we do that we can have a word of prayer, we can stand and pray. Jesus Christ who reigns above in heaven, what a privilege to be before you this Sabbath morning. We want to briefly share your word as we commence this Sabbath. May your Holy Spirit abide with us. May you tarry us on till we come to the end of this today. In your holy name I pray. Of late we, um, at work, I've been having a discussion with some of my colleagues on what it means to be significant. You can be fairly successful but success may not be enough. But now how do you transit from success to significance? And I was also telling some people that you can meet Christ, but it's something else to know him. Meeting him can make you successful. Knowing him will make you significant. And if you look at the ministry of Christ, and today I just want to narrow down to the ministry of his discipleship and look at how significance was manifested in that discipleship, especially with the story of John. And not John the Baptist, John the Revelator, John the disciple. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that knowing Christ is more significant than just meeting him. There's the meeting him bit, but of course through meeting him, that experience with him already amounts to what knowing him is all about. If you look at this disciple called John, and that's why we want to title this message, uh, Basking in the Greatness of Jesus Christ, John the Disciple. This is somebody who's uh, said the Bible as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was a fisherman together with his brother, and there were sons of Zebedee. Nothing much is said about the father, really. All we know is that there were merchants of fishing that time, fairly wealthy people. I think uh, you, you, most of us think uh, there's wealth in this world of today. I mean, fishermen that time were actually very wealthy people. This guy with his brother, James, are born in Bethsaida. And you know Bethsaida? was known as a city of miracles because that's where uh, more or less uh, the first uh, healing of a blind person happens and even the feeding of the 5,000 men happens somewhere nearby. But the interesting thing with this city is that even after all these miracles that Jesus did, they were still not repenting of their sins. And this is the town where this person or this guy is born. He even ministered in Ephesus, so he was born in Bethsaida. He ministered with Paul in Ephesus, and in the end was exiled in the land of Patmos, which means throughout his ministry, right from the word go, he displayed consistency in meeting and knowing Christ. Of course, they were nicknamed the Sons of Thunder, 
the Bible doesn't talk much about this, but then when you look at their temperaments, especially John and James, when you look at their temperaments, you see people who are very choleric, you know, guys who are very, you know, tough people, more or less like Peter, but they, you know, they, they are very, you know, steadfast in their support for Christ. I mean, they have strong conviction. They know what they're doing. They know what they are pursuing. I mean, they are convicted uh, of their call into the ministry. They, together with Peter, together with Peter, and Peter, James, and John. I mean, James and John were brothers, but then Peter was also with them. But when you look, when you study the ministry of Christ, you see these are the people that Christ really kept close to him. Kabisa. And we'll see uh, how this uh, pans out. By the way, he's the only disciple. If you do your study deeply, you'll find that probably John is the only disciple who was never martyred. Must have died of old age. All the others were martyred, you know. And he was also acknowledged, you know, for playing a very important role in the early church. Remember, uh, even while ministering in Ephesus, actually Paul acknowledges that, you know, this person recognizes our mission to preach to the Gentiles or the uncircumcised, you know, and he embraces us to help with the ministry. I mean, he was very clear in his, uh, in his call uh, into ministry. And of course, he wrote five books. And in these five books that he wrote, of course, John, first, second, uh, and third, John, and uh, Revelation, but he's only mentioned there eh, in one, you know. You know, those who are in academia, you know how obsessed somebody is with, you know, being mentioned, you know, attributing your own uh, writing, eh, saying, eh, it's, this is my theory, you know, therefore it's by Andrew, uh, you know, 1998 et al., you know. But this person, you know, is inspired by the Spirit to do all this, is never even mentioned in most of them, except one. Now, I want to posit that if there's anything that manifests significance in Jesus' ministry, if there's, a, if there's an apostle or a disciple who actually embodied transition from success to significance in Jesus' ministry, it is this guy. And I'll tell you why I say that. One, John is a loyalist and disciple par excellence. And what I mean by loyal and disciple uh, par excellence, he exudes obedience. If you look at how he was called into the ministry, uh, if you, especially reading the book of Matthew from chapter 4, uh, there are about 20, 21 going there, you'll find that Jesus Christ calls him to ministry. He does not ask questions. Remember Zebedi, his father, is a, much, is a fisherman of repute, you know, in Bethsaida. They leave all the boat materials, and they had two sons. They leave all the boat materials and all the uh, paraphernalia, him and his brother, and they come straight into ministry. There's no evangelistic campaign. There's no happiness class. There is no personal ministry into their home. There's no baptism. He's just called into ministry, and he leaves everything he's doing and comes straight into into, into into work with God. And you can see, uh, if you read the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 21, you can see there, um, let me just read it very quickly. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 21. It says, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Most of us, you know, when you're called to discipleship, will come up with all manner of excuses and say, oh, you know, I need to get this right, I need to move my location, I need to move my name into this church, I need to do this. But these guys even live their livelihood. Some people say, no, you know, I work in this country, therefore I need time to align, you know, with the new ways of uh, the culture of the church and all that. But James, John, they even leave their parents. They leave their father. They leave their business to come into the ministry with Christ. They don't know what to expect, but they just leave and come. Okay? 
And besides that, uh, this doesn't only show obedience, but it even shows humility. Because this Jesus, I mean, they've heard about him, they don't know much about him, but he just comes into the street, into Bethsaida and says, I need you guys to go and help me, uh, you know, uh, do God's work. And they don't ask any question. Swiftly move straight into the work. What a way, you know, of showcasing significance in Christ's uh, ministry. But he's also a pillar of the early church. Remember, I told you in Galatians, when you look at the book of Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 7 uh, to 9, uh, in the book of Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 7, but on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, this is Paul speaking, as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, and verse 9, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. He is even accepting, you know, to go and minister to the uncircumcised, to the Gentiles, if you want. How powerful can, I mean, this guy is not taking for granted the influence that Jesus Christ already has on him. He doesn't wait, you know, to be approached by somebody, you know. I mean, he goes straight there, finds ministry going on, and says, yes, I support this call because I understand what God is trying to do here. This actually showcases how powerful, uh, uh, um, you know, how significant John uh, was in ministry. But he's also, they're also described as sons of thunder. I mean, this speaks to his identity. Remember when uh, Jesus Christ prepares to go to Jerusalem, and then he walks through Samaria, you know, and uh, finds these people who are trying to resist him. You know what James and John say? Actually, they say, they say, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy these people who are opposing you? You know, they don't need anybody's permission. They, they don't even wait for Christ. Even though Christ later on rebukes them and tells them, no, I didn't come to destroy anything. But they are there to defend the gospel of Christ at whatever cost. You know, they stand there and say, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like saying, I mean, let me try to say it in Kenyan lingo. Hey, boss, unataka tuwaonyeshe? Eh? Unataka tuwaonyeshe? You know? Give us a signal, you know, as some politicians would say in South Africa. Just give us a signal, you know? Do you want us to show, you want us to call fire just like Elijah did? Do you want us to call fire down on these guys right now for them to know it's you who's here? They are never afraid of defending the gospel of Christ at whatever stage. But again, which is the most important one and, the, and really the crux of uh, John's ministry and why I personally am convinced and I'd like to convince you that this is somebody who showcased transition from success to significance is that they were actually in the sanctums. If you want, you can say they were the deep state of Jesus Christ. What do I mean? At every critical juncture of Christ's ministry, they are there. When Jesus is raising Jairus' daughter from the dead, John is there. When Jesus is being transfigured, John is there. At the night of uh, Christ's betrayal, John is there. It reminds me uh, of, uh, you know, something we used to be told in high school, actually primary, you know, the, the deputy teacher would be there saying, you must be everywhere at the right time, at the right place, and at the right what? At the right time, place, and? Doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place. This guy was always where Jesus was. Doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place. In fact, on the night of the betrayal, you know, John witnesses Jesus' sorrow when Jesus becomes so sorrowful and Jesus even sobs before him. I wanted to ask you this morning, can Jesus trust you enough to sob before you? Can Jesus be sorrowful before you? Are you part of what is regarded as his deep state? Can he see a John, the apostle, when he sees you? Can you take that identity of being John, 
the beloved. Because indeed, it is in knowing and meeting Christ and being there all the time and defending the gospel and obeying his call that actually you become significant in the ministry of Christ. May this be an encouragement to you this morning in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath Church. Uh, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And I can see very beautiful faces, uh, very handsome faces. Um, uh, I want to tell you the mission story. But today, our mission story is coming all the way from Europe. Um, this is in the land, where, uh, in the land of King Philip, the, uh, I think the sixth. Uh, that is Spain. Spain is the 16th largest GDP in the, in the world. But in as much as that is the case, the Advent message in this country is very low. Um, almost 55% of the population in Spain are Christians, but 40, 40, almost 50% 40, almost 40, 40 of it uh, are yet to get a, get a, to be Christians and to have a faith. So that is a very good population to go and preach the word. And so today I want to tell you a story of a couple where the husband, Ivan, comes from uh, Mexico and the lady comes from um, Cuba. Um, the lady's name is Del Delia. Now, the two of them um, followed a friend of theirs to Spain as missionaries to go and preach the word of the Lord. So, uh, as you all know, the capital of uh, Spain is Madrid. Uh, most of the, of the football fans will know, uh, they will be aware of Madrid by default of support of their football field, a uh, football, football club. Now, uh, the two of them, uh, the young couple, were sent Six, uh, 90 kilometers away from Spain to a small town where they were among the very first people to go there as Seventh-day Adventists to identify themselves as so. For the first Sabbath, they fellowshiped together in their home and they did not have uh, anyone else to join them. But Ivan, who was a really good instrumentalist as we have them here, uh, was able to minister to his wife and play music and they all sang together happily. But they were told of, a, of an old lady who wanted to have Bible study and appreciate the messages therein. And uh, they, after a couple of days, they reached out to her. And uh, she was invited to Ivan's house. And the following Sabbath, they were able to fellowship as a, a company of four. That is Ivan, Delica, the old lady, and her grandson, who was the age of four. As they proceeded on, uh, the messages went on uh, being shared, and uh, the old lady invited uh, Delica and Ivan to their home, and they were able to fellowship with the mother of the young boy, and she also was also brought in. Same case for the father of the young boy. But the story of the, young, of the father was a bit different, um, and I would like this to be taken with a pinch of salt, especially with the ladies in the house that um, women hardly do anything good for ourselves. But we always focus on the, on the family and the ladies in the house. So the, um, the mother to the young boy told Delica and her husband that uh, it was her husband's birthday coming up in the following week. So the, uh, Delica and her husband decided to bake a cake and hold, host a small party for the, for, for the young man. And the young man was pleasantly surprised and he was, uh, he could not stop smiling and the joy in his heart was clear. That was what brought him to the church. And he said from there on, he wants to study the Bible with uh, um, the family. And so the company now increased to how many people? Six, 
now. Uh, as they were proceeding, because of the, uh, of, of the story that the, old, the young man uh, had, uh, had, was given a birthday party that he had never had before, um, the father of the, young, of the young man, now the grandfather of the small boy, decided to join, but with a specific mission, only to come and listen to the music. Uh, and so the company kept on increasing. Uh, in, the, in a span of one year and a half, they were able to baptize eight, eight people, and the company now is of 30 people. Now they want to uh, build a church, they want to have, have a place where they can worship and have an outreach ministry from, their, from that point. As the mission story today tells us that the smallest thing that we can do, let's do it, and it will be of help to others. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath day. This is a time for prayer. So those that are able, let's kneel down. And as we kneel down, let's sing 271. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the praise of the world over us to your throne where grace does abound. May our life be transformed by your love. May our soul be refrained from above. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer. Let us pray. Our God and our Father who art in heaven, may your name be glorified for you are a God who created us. You are also our God who redeemed us. We thank you, Lord, for you have been with us throughout this week. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for we traveled near and far, and you have protected us. We thank you, Jehovah, for you fed us, you clothed us, and you protected us. May your name be glorified. We exhort your name, Lord God Almighty, for your grace that abounds to each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, who left all the glory in heaven, to die for us on the cross. We thank you, God, for you are a compassionate God, a gracious God, a loving God. May you be exalted, for you are a loving God. This time, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the word that has come to us through our brother Andrew. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for exhorting us and reminding us how we need to be significant before you. We also thank you, Lord, for the missionary story that has come from Spain, telling us of what others are doing to your ministry. May your name be glorified, Lord. Lord, we commit our lives before you this morning. May you search each one of us of our hearts and forgive us of all unrighteousness. Lord, it is our desire to live a life worthy of your calling. We therefore pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us each one of us, Lord, that our worship today may be acceptable before you. We commit all the services today, Lord, in your hands. As the Adventist uh, main organization are leading today, may you be with each and every person that will stand before this congregation. May you imbue them with your Holy Spirit that our worship today may be acceptable before you, Lord. We commit Pastor Kennedy Mfune and all those that will be ministering during divine service, Lord, in your hands, may you be with them and guide them. Father, amidst us, we do have others that are not feeling well. Others will not make it to church. Others will still come to church, but not, they are not feeling well. We want to commit them all in your hands, Father. May you touch them with your healing hand. Lord, we know it is on the Sabbath that you healed many people, Jesus, when you are here on earth. 
Lord, may you extend your healing hand to your people today, Lord. We also have our friends that have been bereaved, Lord, amidst us. Lord, as they are mourning, may you bring comfort to them. May you, Lord, reach out to them and comfort them by your grace, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your God who cares for us. We want to pray for our children, Lord, as they come to know more about you. Lord, may you be with each one of them. Some of them are in school. Some of them are looking for job employment and businesses. Some of them are looking for life partners. We commit all our youth and children in your hands, Lord. May you direct them and help them to love you and to know about you. Thank you, Lord, for your God who hears our prayer. For we have prayed all this in the name of Jesus. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. We want to thank God. Um, I want to appreciate our uh, AMO members uh, in this day as they lead the service. We want to thank the choristers led by our elder Philip. Thank you, Andrew, for the devotion. Um, thank you, Dennis, for the mission story and the elder pension. We want to thank Lord for the prayer. Now, I want to invite all of us, those in the congregation and those who are watching us online, to the second segment of our Sabbath school, the lesson study. And this week, we have been looking at the message of the first angel that says, fear God and give glory to what? To him. So as we get our Bible and our lesson guides, let us get together and try to understand what does it mean to fear God and what does it mean to give glory to him. So if we understand those two phrases at the end of this lesson, then we have done what the lesson is emphasizing for us all. So I want to ask all of us to stand up, we pray, and then get into our classes. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. Father, what a great privilege that you've called us to be your children. And above all, Lord, you've given us your message. Father, this morning as we open the scripture to study, Lord, we pray that may the Holy Spirit fill us. Father, may we understand what it means to fear you. Lord, may we understand what it means to glorify you. Speak to our hearts for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, teachers, we will finish the class at exactly 10. Thank you very much. May we get to our classes.
Good morning and uh, happy Sabbath. Um, we are glad uh, that you could join us at Lavington uh, SDA Church uh, for this Sabbath school study this morning. And uh, I invite you in a special way, our online audience, uh, to participate in this uh, study. Please uh, bring forth your Bibles, your notepads as we go into discussion. As we begin, uh, may I introduce uh, on this uh, panel uh, to begin with, uh, those who are with us this morning. Uh, on my left-hand side, Elder, please introduce yourself. Uh, good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is uh, Geoffrey Nyamota. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Um, my name is Moses Kefa. I'm also happy to be here and glad you could join us. Thank you. Thank you. We're indeed uh, glad that you would be with us this morning. My name is uh, Chimonya Mutantika, and I will be the moderator for this discussion this uh, morning. Uh, shall we pray as we begin uh, this study? Let us believe and pray. Our precious master in heaven, we come unto thee this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts for this great opportunity you've given us to study your word. Lord, we have gone through three lessons and today we are going to the fourth lesson. And uh, as we discuss the lesson, fearing God and giving glory, how we pray that the Holy Ghost guides us to say that which we need to say and to live that which the Bible has told us to do to the honor and glory of your name. Lord, as we start this discussion, we invite you to uh, guide all those who are uh, our online audience and also those uh, listening that, Lord, uh, we may start together and uh, finish together. We want to thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome once more to those who have just joined us uh, as we look into this study uh, of uh, Lesson 4 in uh, our second quarter study. The uh, title of uh, the lesson uh, is Fear God and Give Glory to Him. Fear God and Give Glory to Him. And this is a continuation of the three cosmic messages in the quarter that we are studying around uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. In this uh, study, uh, our memory text uh, for today comes from the book of Revelations, chapter 14, verses 12. Revelations, chapter 14, verses 12, and it reads, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Thank you. That ends uh, our reading. Um, the writer of the quarterly introduces an interesting uh, uh, story or parable uh, by an author, Soren Kegard, around um, an event that occurs uh, in a theater. A clown comes from the back uh, of the stage to warn people that there is fi a fire backstage. And as he warns the people there, they cheer and they clap for him. Um, there is a true fire in the back, and uh, he is uh, agitated and continues to warn them that they should come out of the studio of the theater because there is a fire, and yet uh, they clap even louder, uh, you know, for him despite the warning he gives. The author of this short story likens this to what will happen uh, at the time Christ has come yet again uh, for the second time uh, to um, meet his people. When we look at uh, the um, verse, uh, uh, Second uh, Peter, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 9, and uh, the Bible reads, The Lord is slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Verses 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt. The introduction in this uh, lesson is simply speaking to us and telling us that God has a plan. God has revealed the revelation of Jesus in his second coming. God has sent in advance of his coming the three angel messages that are meant to go and speak to every nation, tribe, language, and people and therefore there is this purpose to be. Like it was in the time of old, uh, when we turn our Bibles uh, to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 17, this is what uh, the Bible says about what happens at this time. 
Luke chapter 17, verses 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. 28, likewise as it is, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The study introduces the end time events as they will happen, but we are reminded in all this that they are a series of things that have to happen, that uh, God has sent this message to us, and that we as his ambassadors must share this message because it is his will that it must be shared with the entire uh, earth. Our lesson study, Fear God of Sunday. The lesson writer says, the purpose of the book of Revelation for a generation is to prepare a people to be ready for Jesus' soon return and to unite with him in giving his last day message to the world. Revelation reveals the plans of God and unmasks the plans of Satan. It presents God's final appeal, his urgent, eternal, universal message for all humanity. And yet one may ask, that why does God even bother to make this final appeal? Why hasn't uh, God sent his son Jesus to then come the second time by now? You know, perhaps the question that is. But we see that in the Bible it is written that it is for the love of Christ and the love of God that he seeks for all humanity to be saved. Like I read from Second Peter chapter 3, verses 9, and I'll read again, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so God gives us all an opportunity, an opportunity while we are yet alive to seek his face, an opportunity to accept him and his salvation so that we can be counted among the number. A fear of the Lord. Um, it is used here in uh, the sense of uh, being afraid of God, but, in a, but the fear of the Lord is not used in the sense of being afraid of the Lord, the way we are scared of, uh, you know, an animal or a person uh, of that kind. But rather, it is used in a sense of reverence, awe, and respect. It conveys the thought of absolute loyalty to God for surrender to his will we are reminded that the fear of the Lord is indeed a mind and an attitude where God is central of whatever our thoughts, our actions, and our deeds. We see this uh, in uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6, six uh, and 8. How exactly did Christ live his life? And I'm reading Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6. It reads, Who, being in form of God, did not consider it robbery, to be equal with God. Verses 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus humbles himself. Jesus comes down on earth as a human being and is humble and obedient to God's uh, will up until death. But we see that this is indeed the opposite of what happens in uh, heaven. Um, in the case of Lucifer, who desires to place himself and exalt his throne above the stars of God, where he wanted to um, um, overseat God you know, from the throne. We see and are invited to this attitude that Jesus Christ has. Lucifer was self-centered. Lucifer only wanted what was you know, good in his own eyes. But we see that in the case of Jesus and in the case of the calling today for us, we are asked to fear God and put him first in our thinking. We are to renounce our self-centeredness and pride and live a life holy for God. In the Bible, there are also instances where we see this fear particularly exhibited. And let's look at some of them when we turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 22 and reading verses 12. Uh, as a background, God is speaking to Abram, and this is at the point where Abram was about to sacrifice his son as God had requested him. 
So verse 12, and he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your, son, your only son from me. When we look at Psalms uh, chapter 89 verses 7, again the Bible reads, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. Solomon, the wisest man to have ever lived on earth, had this to say in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 13, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. In Proverbs chapter 2, verses 5, then again it reads, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. We see that in all these verses that we have read here, the context is really that fear is respect, fear is reverence, and fear is all for what God is and what he has done. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 to 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Verses 14, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or or evil. And so, beloved, I put it to you that to fear God in the context of this study, in the context of our lives today, is not to fear God the way I will fear, um, you know, a snake uh, or a wild animal, but it is to know that fearing is a state of mind. Fearing is placing God first in all the things that we desire. And a part of this fear is also coming into the love of Christ and knowing that if we love Christ, we must keep the commands that he has given uh, unto us as well. I will now invite the panelists to uh, comment, uh, perhaps on any part of this introductory part and the first part of Fear God. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I'd like to start uh, by saying thank you so much for the introduction. Um, just like uh, when you started the introduction, you talked about someone who was in the theater and uh, yet comes out and warns people that you know what, there is fire. People did not notice because they thought the, the action was still on. Uh, and so this moment, we as Christians, we are being warned that uh, Christ is coming the second time and uh, we need to fear God and glorify him. Uh, and uh, remember the Bible has clearly told us that Christ is not going to come the second time if we would not have preached this gospel to every tongue every um, nation uh, and tribe and uh, all that. So it is really our responsibility that as we uh, uh, ponder out this word, fearing the Lord and glorifying him, that uh, we don't make a joke of the gospel, but rather take this opportunity to really live the gospel, live according to what Christ has done. And uh, like uh, elders were, you were going through, um, I, I noticed um, when Satan talks in the section on Sunday, uh, when you read the book of uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 14, verse uh, 13 and 14, um, repeatedly the devil uh, refers to himself, I, I will exalt, I will do this. And uh, even in our ordinary living as Christians, it is important that we allow Christ, because if we reference, reference the Lord, this aspect of I would actually come out of us. Uh, and so the only message that I wanted to say on that um, is that uh, for, for me, I quickly realized that fearing the Lord is, as you have said, referencing the Lord and trusting in him as the only source of our salvation. And uh, if, 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 if you were to miss anything else in this lesson discussion today, uh, distinguish between how uh, the Lord presents himself and how the devil presents. Yes. So the devil is about himself. The Lord is about, his, he has given us the grace. And uh, through the grace, uh, we, we have the life. Uh, and so uh, I would like to allow my, fr my, my friend also to add before uh, I, I carry on. Thank you. Yeah, so for me, the introductory part, especially when you're talking about the fear of God, uh, what came out is the love that he has for us. And he's constantly seeking and pleading with us to come to him. 
and to live a certain way, including my elder when you mentioned the wisest man to live on earth. After all he had, you see for us, what we have are wishes, but he had everything. He could say it and it is done. But in the end, after all that enjoyment, he says, but in conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. That is all we ought to do. And then there's an element of why is God always reaching out? It's because of the love he has for us. I mean, practically, some of us who are in the hunting fields, so you'll get either you have uh, identified someone and then you love them, you will constantly keep reaching out to them. And even going further to tell them, this is what I'm putting on the table. I think this is what God says, I have loved you. This is what I'm setting before you. I'm setting before you life. Walk out of your self-centered life so that you can get to inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is what you are thinking. Amen. And thank you very much for those comments. Order, fearing God and uh, obeying God. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, my brother, for ex expounding further. So I would like to move to the next level and talk about fearing and uh, obeying God. Uh, and uh, Elder, thank you so much for making it clear that any time we are talking about fearing God, it's not about the fear like the way I would fear uh, a harsh person or I would fear a policeman. It's about the reference, the way you've put it, of our Lord. Uh, and so when I looked at this section of the lesson, um, two things came out, that the Lord has given what we call statutes and has given us commandments. Uh, and so I would like us to read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, and verse 2, uh, which says uh, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. So when uh, I read through this lesson, I quickly realized that, yes, the Lord has given us commandments, and we know the Ten Commandments. And uh, knowing is one thing, uh, living by the commandments is another. And uh, remember, Christ came and died on the cross. And uh, John 3.16 tell, tells us that for God loves for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So all of us as human beings, Christ has died for us. And by grace, we, we have the salvation. But um, there is one other bit that I actually realized uh, when, when going through this lesson, that um, we as Christians, yes, we have the grace, but we also have the commandments. And the commandments are there like a light. You know, if it's so dark and um, you, you want to move from one corner to another, it will be difficult for, for you to actually move. But if there is light, then it will be very easy for you to navigate within uh, a dark room. So um, when I look at the, what the, the Bible is telling us, uh, yes, Christ has died on the cross for us, and that has already earned our salvation. It's only us now to have that faith in this Christ, to trust him, and do according to what his will is. That is, it's our responsibility to now te um, understand what the commandments are and living according to the commandments. Because you know, someone would look at it and say, um, you're becoming a legalist by counting the commandments from number one to number, th number ten and living by that. But the Bible is very clear that the, the, the commandments are given because even Christ when he was here, he says that not one, not, not one iota of the commandments will be, um, okay, each of them will be fulfilled. So none of them did he remove. So it's our responsibility really as, as Christians to understand that if we are talking of fearing and obeying God, we have to understand that he has given us his statutes and his commandments. We obey them. And uh, if we do, then we will be living according to what the Lord has given us. And by so doing, we will have actually 
uh, properly feared the go uh, God, that is referencing him, and we should also have obeyed him uh, in the right uh, direction. I would like um, someone, I think you've read this Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14 a couple of times, uh, but it's, it's never a problem reading the same uh, verse. Uh, what I find uh, critical is uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 13, talks about uh, the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So our responsibility really is to keep these commandments. And as I've said, we keep the commandments because they are a light to our feet, a light to our life. Uh, and so if we understand it that way, then... Uh, Fearing the Lord will be an easy thing. So I would like to allow others to add, if uh, you want to add something, uh, even as we carry on with the discussion. Thank you. I, I think I, I have, we can say, an experience when it comes to fear of God and the commandments. And, and what the, the writer says in the first paragraph, that the gospel sets us free from the lost condemnation, not from our responsibility to obey it. So for, for, for those who maybe have travel in the, of course, my elders, you have, in the countries where the law is very strict on traffic laws. So imagine you're in a foreign country, you are over speeding, you have been flagged, and you know it's not like here you can assume and maybe just dash off because mm -hmm. we don't have the right systems and cameras. And then finally, because you have to park on the side, uh, the cop comes, he has to take your details, and then when you explain yourself, because you, what is at stake is that you may be deported, depending on what you have done. But by you giving an explanation, somehow he lets you go and tells you, please go and drive safely and carefully as well. How will you feel? You would, of course, go off driving full speed and say, yeah, I'm no longer under the law. But what you will do at that particular moment is swap slowly from your parking spot and drive, keeping in your mind all the laws. Every turn, you know, you have to indicate you have to turn at this time. You have to stop at this stop because you have already been freed. Not, not to obey, but now you can experience what that salvation is, that you have been ex exempted from this, uh, from this punishment. And what you ought to do now is to follow that lot with the letter so that you don't find yourself again on that corner. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I, I guess a stark reminder here that scripture does not downplay the law in any way. In fact, that Christ, the scripture um, uh, by Jesus Christ does not downplay any part of it, but it reminds us that, uh, you know, obviously this is what we should do. And I, I love the example of, you know, the traffic cop or the traffic lights, you know, should we use it in this context? Because they are really there to be that signal for us, to tell us that, uh, you know, it is green, mm -hmm. it is time to go, it is time to stop, stop, think, have a moment and all that. And in Psalms 119 verses 105, as Elder, you know, rightly mentioned here, the Bible says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. And you seem to have, uh, you know, all this leakage around what I need to do. Because then you have the traffic lights, then you have the word, then you have the salvation that is given unto us. Clearly, God has a plan for us that we indeed must be able to follow uh, by his grace and by the divine providence of the Holy Spirit. We will now move into... Yeah, thank you. That I noted, if I don't say it, I may not have the thank moment. <laughs> it's about um, the book of Matthew chapter 10. Uh, verses uh, 28, which talks about, and they do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So the message that I got here is whatever we do, let's know that the Lord has given us life and uh, has given it to us to live in, a, in its ab abundance. If we trust in him, then we are sure our uh, heaven shall be ours. But the moment we, we digress, uh, because you see any, any fear like the what we are talking about, these ones are about the body. Yes. But uh, the Lord is the one who has given us the life. So we really need to make sure that we trust in him because uh, if Christ comes the second time and you are on the wrong side, then you find yourself in hell. Absolutely. 
Amen. Or your as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Tuesday, living a God-centered life. Kevin, please tell us about it. Yeah, so Elder, even in conjunction with uh, what has happened on Monday and, and, and the element of appreciating that the law is there to guide us and protect us, not to make us feel like we are under dictatorship, but to protect us. Because if that traffic sign is not there, someone can, can come off the wrong side and hit you. And now it's not about you saying, oh, the laws are bad. But if they were there, you could have been saved or you could have a recourse. So when we come to a living a God-centered life, a question is asked, what is the center of your life? And you may reflect for a moment and say, uh, do you have a self-centered life or a God-centered life? And, 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 and when you wake up, and, and it's good that even as we were sharing this morning, that there is a pattern. We, we, even as, and, and I think that's what I picked in the morning. As a Christian, you must have an ordered life because God is a God of order. You need to know that when you wake up, what do you start with? Do you start with prayer or you start with your intellect? No, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to conquer the world. So when, for example, we, of course, all of us, uh, some of us mostly, uh, maybe except our online audience, we are here physically. We were in the country, I want to assume, on Friday. On Thursday, we had an announcement that, oh, Friday is going to be a holiday. So I think the first thought for some of us would be like, oh, now I'm going to have that holiday that I have been missing. I'm going to do X ways. I'm going for that road trip. It rarely does it come to your mind that I may visit an orphanage and do something. And then so that when Christ comes back, I may say, wow. I was hungry, and you fed me. But we all, almost all of us, revered, uh, thought back to our own desires and said, I'm going to use this moment to go and tell it, yeah, what is for me? So most of the time when you maybe are free, your mind wanders off to your dreams and what, where you draw your power from. Let's say you, have, uh, you are in politics, you love movies, you love traveling. And, and, and when you are at that moment and you realize, oh, I think I'm too self-centered. That's why we need to sit down and reflect on that. And maybe sometimes you may wander off to places you may not be comfortable to tell people. And the center issue is actually about your mind. Because that's where it all starts. And, and even as when we're reading Matthew chapter 6, 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I feel like every time now, after leaving this lesson, there is an element of worship that is going to be added in everything, not only in the morning, but in everything that you are going to do. Even maybe going back to traffic, and, and some of us could be very careful drivers, uh, well, and some not, because some of us like to speed off quickly. And imagine you are the father and your kids know you as a very ardent driver who follows the laws to the letter. But when there is a portal, you don't hit it, you, you, don't, you don't miss it, and there was a driver coming from behind. So you look back to see, oh, for me, I was so careful. I didn't hit this portal. I want to see what the other driver does. And oh, boy, there was another portal ahead of you. So you, you have... Uh, shifted your focus from the road, you're looking at what the other driver is doing. And then in the moment you hit it, how will you feel? Exactly. You have been there as, as, as a role model for your kids that this is how safely you need to drive. So that's why even this making God uh, the center of our lives is not a one moment thing. It should be a continuous thing. Every day, every time, every moment, we should always have our focus on God. So maybe my elders, even before I proceed, what have you picked up? Well, I, I think as you said, um, when you are God-centered, um, the Lord will for sure guide you. But the moment you become self-centered, and that is what, like, when we were talking about um, how the devil uh, wanted to be exalted at the expense of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, Christ, ha Christ has had Ever since time immemorial, Christ has had his position. And coveting that position by the devil is actually what brought all these problems here on earth. Uh, and so for me, when I look at this uh, lesson, 
and uh, I, I, as you've rightfully put it, the moment you wake up in the morning and the first thing is reflecting on the goodness of the Lord and uh, allowing him uh, to take charge of you that day. And uh, the day becomes a great success. And at the end of the day, you thank him for the, great, for the good things that he has uh, done unto you. Uh, I can assure you as um, our online audience uh, that if you allow the Lord to be the one to lead you, you can be sure that all the days of your life will be great. And through, because many of, uh, many people who are, have become Christians, not because of the word that we have told them, but because of how they see us living. Because you, 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 I can be telling you good things about Christ, but when you have a problem and you need my support, I'm not there to help you. Then you actually quickly realize that the Christ I have is not the Christ that you should be uh, thinking about. So for me, um, the, 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 sta the statement I would want to finish with on this section is that let us allow uh, God to be the center of everything that we do. Let our mind be fully, uh, be fully occupied with what the Lord has guided us and all shall be well. Thank you. Also, you know, perhaps to this here, Colossians 3 verses uh, 2 where it says, set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. Many a time, uh, like you rightly said, uh, you know, Kepha, we are preoccupied around what will I do for myself? What do I wish to acquire? What do I wish to invest in? How will I grow it for myself, uh, you know, for my benefit? But we are reminded here that, you know, our focus, and like you've said, Elder here, should be on things of above. When we set our eyes, therefore, on Christ, we realize that the breath I have, the opportunities I have today, the means I have, the strength I have, uh, is all given by God's grace, and it should, you know, be used for his glory. And in this case, we are saying, what is this task that God has given us? We are told that it is to share this entire message. It is to share, you know, the love that he has given unto us, to our brethren and to those around and about us. And therefore, setting our eyes on things of above and on Christ himself is of absolute importance. Thank you. Mm. Philippians uh, chapter 2 verse, verses 5 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. We all know Christ and we can see even as we, we're going to talk about the faith of, of Jesus. We know what he has overcome and it, it's good to let that mind that was in Christ be in us. And also my, 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 my Ella has mentioned uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3 verses 2. And then I think the guide here is, first of all, let us choose to allow God. We, we have to allow him. He can't force himself on us. We have to allow him to give us the mind of Christ. And then maybe secondly, choose, we, we need to choose to think about Christ and heavenly things, what clearly Colossians chapter 3 and verses 2 says. And then always keep our eyes on Jesus and be consistent. It is a consistent looking to Jesus that will be our guide to this eternal salvation. And then we have to choose to say no to sin. Uh, when we read Mark chapter 9, verses 43, uh, just a minute. Yeah, we have to choose to make no provision for the flesh. And then we have to choose to look at Jesus. And then lastly, uh, because he also looked at the end goal, despite the shame. Because Jesus, being the Prince of Peace, being the Son of God, he had all the power. He could, some of us could not withstand that shame. At some point, I feel I could have, you know how we say, do you know who I am? You know, do you know who I am exactly? But he chose to despise that shame. It was like, the shame is so little that I can forbear it for the sake of my people. So we can imagine, even as we go through all these tribulations, that we can despise all others, all other events that happen around us that are not leading us to Christ, because we are focused on, on our main aim and goal and purpose that we need to inherit this kingdom that has been promised to us. Thank you, my elder. Amen. Amen. 
We invite our online viewers, uh, please uh, continue to post uh, your comments um, on the study or any uh, other uh, matters you may wish to place here, prayer requests and the likes. Um, I can see from our online uh, viewership, we have uh, Monica watching from uh, Manchester in the UK um, saying happy Sabbath. We have Augustine Pamela Beverly saying happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you, so saints, and I hope that you are indeed uh, enjoying this uh, lesson study and that uh, we are being uplifted even as we study. We now move to giving glory to God, our study for Wednesday. Elder, please share with us. Thank you. Um, I would also want to echo the same to the online audience. But, uh, I've been, my elder, I've been a, a member of the online audience when I didn't find myself in church, and I was truly blessed. <laughs> So uh, our brothers and sisters who are online, um, we, we truly feel blessed to have you uh, together with us. Uh, and so as I touch on uh, briefly on Wednesday, which talks about giving glory to God, um, it is um, a, 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 um, a section of the lesson that really touched me. Uh, it touched me in the sense that uh, I would like us to read the book of um, Revelation chapter 14 uh, and verse 7. Um, which, uh, which says, and he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Uh, and so, uh, friends, as we uh, ponder on this section, talking about giving glory uh, to God, it's more talking about uh, judgment. Uh, and so when we reflect uh, on the book of Joshua chapter, I think it's uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 7 verse uh, 19, um, it's a, a familiar uh, case that we know of uh, Achan um, who decided uh, to pick what he should not have picked and that did not glorify God. And so when his moment of judgment came, uh, Joshua was very categorical that um, Achan should have glorified God instead of doing what he did. Uh, and so for me, what I got uh, from this section of the lesson is uh, in whatever we do, we as Christians, uh, you know that there, there is a moment, uh, Kefa, in this country, we were talking of, I don't know, my dress, my whatever, my, my choice, um, my, what I eat, what I, whatever it is that I do, it is my choice. And uh, that, of course, reflects the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 14, I think 13, 14, which keeps talking about I, I. Uh, and so if we really truly want to glorify God, we have to understand that we have to live according to his will. He has given us direction on how to live. And uh, direction on how to live in this context, he has told us how, how we should eat. more uh, important, and uh, how we should entertain ourselves or entertain others, uh, and how should we interact with others. God has given us direction on how to do all this. In um, a number of verses in the Bible, uh, when you look at how Christ lived in this world, he was always there for those in need. Are we doing that? Because remember, you will be charged by what you did. And uh, if for sure you're going to be charged by what you did, it means you have to make sure that your body, I have to make sure that my body reflects what the Lord desires of me uh, by how I dress, by how I interact with others. Because um, it is my moment. You, you know, if I have the love of Christ, then I would want my brother, my sister, who is getting lost, uh, to come to the fold through my actions, uh, through um, how I interact with that uh, brother or that uh, sister. Friends, as I looked at this section of uh, the, 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 um, the lesson, it's more or less talking about uh, the judgment that will be, uh, uh, okay, the judgment that we'll receive in the very end. So if we have lived according to the grace, of, uh, according to the grace that the Lord has given, against the Lord's will, have a, 
a difficult moment uh, during, the, um, during the actual judgment. And so the writer, uh, Mark Finlay, uh, considers uh, three aspects of uh, reverencing the Lord. And uh, one of them, he talks about using our body to worship the Lord, our mind, and our emotions. Uh, and so as we do all this, uh, we, we are warned that uh, whatever it is that we do, know that in the very end, when our judgment will be uh, pronounced, it was good, we shall find ourselves getting the eternal, uh, eternal life. Uh, and so for in brief, that is all I would want to say of Wednesday, that I am giving glory to God is more about what we do according to his will to make sure that whatever judgment that will be for will be us, not the other way around. Um, Mayala, you, you are free to add or, uh, yeah, yeah. Indeed, uh, um, we must know and remember that uh, we, rather, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? 17, if anyone defies, defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And I think like you have you know, said to us, Elder, already, in our dress, in our entertainment, in our conduct, in every other thing that governs us, do we give glory to God is perhaps the question that you know, we need to take away at an individual basis and continue to think about. It therefore Amen. means that every action of mine at every point in time, how does this reflect this glory to God that we speak to? Amen. Amen. From that is, let us not use our God-given talents for our, to our own glory. Let us always remember that if we can sing well, if we can speak well, if we can do maybe a certain task in the office well, let us not always accept that goal, yes, I'm that good. No, let us always remember that all this has come from the Father and all glory has to go to him. Yeah. Revelations, uh, overcomers, are we get to the end of our lesson? Please share with us. Interesting, and I think it's, uh, I appreciate the writer for finishing mm -hmm. the lesson on that very high note, mm -hmm. that even as we have all seen all these troubles in the world, that we indeed have experienced people in the Bible. We have seen uh, uh, circumstances where people have actually overcome even worse than what we're going through, mm -hmm. despite of us being in this world of sin. And, and, and overcoming, my elder is not just talking, uh, you know, Hey, overcoming is a challenge. No, it's an experience. It's a personal experience, and this only comes from you going through a tribulation. And in the end, you say, indeed, God, this has been you. And uh, I mean, it's all given in the Bible. When we read uh, the Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, we talk of, about the seven churches. We have some that are doing well, some are doing poorly. We have one, some that are suffering a persecution, and then we have some which are partling, a deception. But in each sing single one of these, there are overcomers. How beautiful is that? And that is where I pick my encouragement for this Thursday lesson. The enemy is defeated. Sin is defeated, and the dust that carries the earth is also defeated. Amen? When we look at the first Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, uh, Chapter 5, uh, 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace himself. When the lesson brings uh, me to this verse, you know, I reflect about a lot of things that happened in my life. And then I can tell you for a fact, even those uh, moments where I saw the best lawyers in the world, either saw the best counsel in the world, I can tell you for a fact that when I went back to God and on my knees, that's when my problems were solved. And that's where we may be connecting the Tuesday lesson is that our focus should be on God. We need not to look maybe 
own man to say, oh, I think I need to look at how Elder is conducting himself so that maybe I may become more Christian, I may be coming to church more. But when we allow God to, have, to give us that mind of Christ in us, that we can emulate him, that even through the suffering, not only in the good uh, and the miracles that Jesus was performing, but in every other aspect that he lived. So there's an element of he who calls you is faithful and he will do it so you can step out in action because you are assured that he who called you is with you. So in anything you do, you can step out boldly and act on your faith. Because uh, the, the lesson from uh, Zid Monday or Tuesday was ta talking about the faith in action. The faith in action. Actually, this is the Thursday lesson. Where the writer is saying, this is not legalism. It is victory through Jesus Christ, whose perfect life of perfect righteousness, and that alone is what gives them the promise of eternal life. It is faith in action. It is transforming, life-changing, miraculous grace in the life of the believer. How powerful to end that such a nasty lesson. So maybe my elders <laughs> will have coming. So, um, thanks, uh, um, you know, when uh, I was going through the lesson and uh, came to this section on Thursday, talking about the faith of Jesus vis-a-vis -vis faith. And uh, at the end of it, he tried. And so, uh, friends, if we could add. was to the honor and glory of God. It was never to his honor. And uh, so when, uh, when, when you do that, the Bible uh, mentions 11 times in the book of um, uh, Revelation about the various churches and uh, how they overcame. So in our uh, living around now and the days to come, remember we have had Christianity in a number of uh, generations. And in all these generations, there are those who have overcome because they fully trusted in the Lord and it became, they actually made it to succeed in life because they, they fully trusted in the Lord. But the moment you adopt Isaiah 14, 13, uh, 13 and 14, which talks about what the devil talks about himself all the time, wanting to exalt himself and not exalting the Lord, then we will have lost it. So my parting shot for today is more or less to say that um, we shall become overcomers if we trust in the Lord and allow him to take the lead in whatever uh, we do. Thank you, my elder. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your uh, parting shots and, and, and the summary of the lesson there. Indeed, uh, we're truly blessed uh, to have gathered in this manner together. Kappa, please share your parting shots as we come to the end of our study. Uh, I think, uh, as, as my brother mentioned, that uh, the right of the lesson has, has actually demystified the revelation itself. But it has the scary horns, and the beasts coming from the water. But now we actually look at revelation as the invitation to fear God, but in a positive way, yes. with reverence. And that in all that we do, we should ensure that all glory goes to him the other and finish of our lives. Thank you. Our online viewers, thank you very much. Uh, and I see that there is a comment here. There is a question that is asked by Mele, Melekias Piri. Happy Sabbath. Um, how can we explain to someone about fearing, loving, about the fearing, loving God, more especially to those who understand fear on the negative point of view? Laura, do you want to try and take that uh, in the last minute before we... Well, I How think, do you explain to someone about mm -hmm. the uh, fearing the loving God, more especially those who understand it from the point of, uh, well, negative point of view? Well, I think um, the 
because the time is limited, but I think it's a very important, because fundamental, that's what we've been discussing. Um, the critical thing is anytime you are reading the Bible, you need to understand what is the context. And the context of fearing God's discussion is more to do with referencing. It's not We, we love our Lord for who he is and what he's done to us. And so it's our responsibility. Lesson study that um, God needs to be the center of all our thinking. And when God is the center of this thinking, you know, in all that we do, we then need to translate this thinking and the thoughts into actions. And these actions must be positive choices that we make day by day to lead a life of obedience uh, to Christ who has given us the traffic signals, the words and the commandments that will guide us, you know, even as we do the things that we set to. I will end uh, here by reading again um, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible reads, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our online viewers, we thank you uh, for joining us to this lesson study, and we invite you to continue to study with us throughout this day as we go through the different programs. We will now um, stand up, and uh, Brother Kephas, you'll give us the final closing prayer. Grateful. Shall we pray? Stand and pray. Fear with reverence, mm. reverence with love, and love will breed that obedience of His commandments. Of course, God has first loved you before you were even born. So, even as we close, let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of life, and the gift of the service, and the gift of your salvation. We thank you that you have allowed us to discuss and get to learn from your word this morning. And Father, how we pray that you an awakening of our spirits that you may guide us and actually minister to us so that we can understand what you are us. Even as we are continuing this day as worship on a Sabbath day, how we pray that you abide with us and that we can be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Happy Sabbath. Happy day. And a happy day. Happy Sabbath. We're quite excited to congregate once again in God's house uh, for this Sabbath. Um, it's a wonderful, special Sabbath for us, uh, the, the men in Lavington's congregation. As you can already tell, we are quite exquisitely dressed uh, for the day. Uh, we want to welcome all of you to join us in the joy of this day and of the rest of the Sabbath. Serving up front, uh, from the extreme left, I'll request the team to introduce themselves uh, before we start. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Maria C. Steven. Evans Rams. My name is Onyango Opio. Happy Sabbath. My name is Musa Misiani. We'll, we'll turn to hymn number 610, Stand Like the Brave. After the hymn, Stand Like the Brave, we'll have a presentation from the young man, Dylan, uh, before we continue with the session. So after Stand Like the Brave, we'll have Dylan up front, and then we'll continue with the, with the rest of the hymns. 610, Stand Like the Brave. Sabbath, happy day. The title of the song I am going to sing to you today is Goodness of God. Hope you may be blessed. Fails me 
and all my days have been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Return to him 442. How sweet are the tidings. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrims here as he wanders in exile for more. Soon, soon. Savior in glory appear, and soon will the kingdom come. He's coming, coming, coming soon, I know. Coming back to the earth again, and the wind. Where the 
to have you know, that um, set eyes on the glory of our Lord when he comes back again. 647 it talks about this glory. Mine eyes have seen the glory. 647, mine eyes have seen the glory. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Trumbling out the vintage where the grapes of life were stored. He is loose of fate from fighting of his terrors in sin. His truth is watching on. He is lifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be saved, my soul, my friends, I will be jumping on my feet. His truth is marching home. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make me holy, let us live to make them free. His glory is marching home. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
Amen, amen. We, as I mentioned earlier, the, the men today are dressed exquisitely, even if you've not noticed. Uh, and um, I'm going to request them to come up front to sing with us the hymn that we'll sing after this next one. Um, so all the men, after we finish the hymn we are singing, we request that you come up front. We join together in a wonderful hymn. The hymn we're going to sing is a Charles Miles classic, uh, When I Get Home, I Shall Wear a Golden Crown. Uh, Rehema and the team are going to project the lyrics for When I Get Home. It's a common hymn, classic convention hymn. We hope that you will sing together with us about when the sorrow will be over when we get home. I suspect the men did not hear um, that they were supposed to be up front to sing 422, Come We That Love the Lord. So as we, as we await for the men to come to sing with us 422, we shall, uh, we shall switch all to men? 551. All men, all men eh? All men. All, it's all, all men. men. All men, please come up front. We are singing 422. But as we wait for you to come up front, we are going to sing the first, uh, we're going to sing 551 as the men um, arrange themselves up front. Jesus, Savior, pilot me, 551. Savior, pilot me. As 
as a mother steals her child, broke us as the ocean wide. leading us in singing 422. The men are the choristers. Uh, it does not mean the congregation is watching them perform. It means you join us together as we sing, Come we that love the Lord. Marching to Zion. 422, Marching to Zion. remain but I'll, I'll request that. Uh, another one okay <laughs> we'll, we'll turn to song number 
Now that we'll remain with the, with the men, we'll sing song number 537, uh, He Leadeth Me. 537, He Leadeth Me. I, I can tell you the warmth you feel on the pews is warmer up front. And we, we thank the Lord for this. 537, He Leadeth Me.
Happy Sabbath. Yeah, the choir, which is uh, which has just uh, sung, uh, the official title is Divine Echoes Choir. You could see the vibration of the echoes, you know, when they sing. And we want to thank God for our Amo Choir. Uh, we look forward to more as we engage with God during this worship service. Uh, please, with humility and simplicity of our hearts, let's humble ourselves and pray. Heavenly Father, we are here now to worship you through the announcement and promotion items. The announcements and the promotion that will be done here is all about you, about your name, about your reputation, and how much we pray that as we listen to this announcement that we may regard them as part of the worship for today. That honor, praise, and glory may return to you in heaven. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, on behalf of Elder uh, Philip Opio, who today is the chief chorister on behalf of men, let me welcome you all for the worship in announcements and promotions. I want to bring it to your attention that there are two announcement items which did not find themselves in the bulletin, and for that reason, please, I seek your keen listenership. Amo will be having a breakfast worship service here tomorrow to launch the series of, uh, on becoming a man. And our guest speaker, who shall be speaking to us today, will officially launch it and dedicate it to God so that it becomes God exalting and God glorifying during the entire series. So all men who have sung here and men who have not sung, tomorrow at 7 a.m. sharp, we are required to be seated here so that we can launch and dedicate our own Becoming a Man revival series. Another item that is not in the bulletin is from prayer ministries. All our candidates who are sitting for international exams, all of you, we will have pastoral prayers for you next Sabbath, physical. And then thereafter, we'll organize for a virtual prayer series also so that we can present you before God as you engage in your international exam. So the parents, please ensure that you come with the children or their representatives. And then number two, please also share with us the names of the candidates uh, for purposes of continuous you know, prayers with them, um, uh, even as they prepare for the exams. The various walls, AMO, AWM, youth, clubs, if you have a candidate who is sitting international exams uh, this season, please share the details, the name of the candidate, the telephone number, prayer ministries and pastors and elders would really wish to be engaging with our candidates. Uh, otherwise, as we are aware, today is uh, Amo Sabbath, and uh, in the afternoon, we will have a very engaging interactive session on why men need to be mentors. We invite everyone to attend, and uh, we also invite all of us to pray with our uh, pastor, uh, our guest pastor, Pastor Kennedy Mfune, who has come all the way from Zambia just to exalt God in the worship service today. Uh, another announcement just for highlighting is that uh, the Ambassador's Social Sunday is on tomorrow at Aboretum. Please, if you are a, a member of the Ambassador's or a parent to an Ambassador, please register uh, with the 300 Bob through the leadership of the club. Uh, chaplaincy training is also announced that uh, we'll be having a chaplaincy training here 
um, from the 30th of May. It's just for a heads up, uh, and uh, we request all to participate. Children Ministries, your announcement item is also there. Uh, the lessons are now available, and parents with children, you are encouraged to uh, get the lessons for our children so that we keep them in touch with Christ. Baptism. We will be having baptism on the 17th of June, 2023. Those who are uh, preparing for baptism and those who desire to renew their vows and their relationship with Christ, uh, please ensure that you are steadily in the preparation class so that uh, come the baptism day, we may be all equipped for baptism. Uh, we have a, a wedding announcement here that we are pleased to announce the wedding between Elizabeth Mawundu of Seventh-day Adventist Church Lovington and uh, Bethuel Onyango Oyo of Seventh-day Adventist Obisa. The wedding will be officiated by Pastor Samuel Kariba on 30th of April uh, here in Lovington. And so is our member here by any chance? Elizabeth, are you here? Okay. Uh, this is the second reading, and I'm, I'm sure that if you have any issues regarding this wedding, feel free to see the pastor or any of the elders. We are also pleased to announce the wedding between Phoebe Adoyo Oyugi of Seventh-day Adventist uh, Church Ebenezer Mlango and Felix Olonde of Seventh-day Adventist uh, Lovington. The wedding will take place on the 14th, May 2023. And I suppose that Felix must be here. Where is Felix? Yeah, please wave at the congregation. Oh, wow. Wow. And the bride-to-be is also here. Thank you very much. We welcome you, and uh, may the Lord be glorified in your wedding arrangements. For now, I'm going to invite our church clerk to make some very executive announcements on behalf of the church leadership. Church clerk, please come over and you introduce yourself. Good morning, saints. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Quite some beautiful singing by the Amo. Can you say amen? I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, the church board sitting of uh, 13th um, of April 2023 recommended the following names to the church business meeting as incoming transfer so that they can join our congregation. Alden Donji Ouma from Seventh day Adventist Church, Umoja. Lois Nyaboni Machoka from SDA Church, Nairobi Central. Osewe Mary Angela from SDA Church, Kitale Central. Paris Machoka Bochere from SDA Church, Nairobi Central. This is the second reading, so. And having been recommended by the church board, I therefore move that we accept these names to our register elder. Uh, so moved, seconded that we accept these names to the sisterhood and the brotherhood of this church. Show of hands. Okay. How many are of the contrary vote with the left? Okay. Thank you. In the same sitting, uh, the following names were also recommended as outgoing transfers to join various uh, fellowships uh, across the world. We have Anne Kithe of to, so they're transferring to SDA Church Westlands, our new Sabbath school now, which is an organized church. Arnold Ogutu to Westlands as well. Cornelius Mutuku Chamia to SDO Church, Sabaki Central, 
Edward Kamau Moniki to Westlands, Evelyn Owar to SDA Church Westlands, Joy Prisika Kwamboka to SDA Church uh, Westlands, Joyce Jeb Korel Chelule to SDA Church Sabaki Central, and Joyce Nyaboga to Seventh-day Adventist Church, Yala Central. Also having been recommended, I therefore move that we accept such transfer. The Bible says that freely you have received the first batch of names. So freely we shall release the second batch of names. And so how many do accept that we let the names to be transferred as desired and as announced. You don't want to let go a man. How many are of the contrary vote? None. Thank you, Brother Kefa. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, members in our congregation, and those of our Sabbath schools who were recommended uh, by the church board to serve in various offices in this church, uh, particularly our Kilalesha Sabbath School. So we have Lydia Aradi as a deaconess, Rachel Wambui, deaconess, Valerie Minayo, deaconess, Tony Taya, and Peter Omolo as a deacon in our Sabbath School at Kilalesha. So I also move uh, that we accept that this five serve in the Lord's vineyard at Kilelesha. Thank you. I'm sure that is a family fellowship. If it was Kilelesha, I would have known. Is that correct? It should be. Right. So, uh, do we vote that uh, the men and women of God serve God's church in family fellowship service school? As read, show of hands. Thank you. Contrary? None. Is that okay? Can you say your name? Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Moses Geffer, a deputy church clerk in this church. Thank you. Thank you. And those of you who would wish to move their membership to Kilaleshua, the upcoming church, to Westlands, please feel free to engage our church clerk. Promotion items. Uh, you are aware that uh, this church is a movement, it's a prophetic movement, and for that matter, Sabbath schools are in the course of being organized as churches. We have had the first born son, Westland, the second born son, Kilaleshua, is coming soon. On the 27th of May, Lovington will be having a second born church. Currently, it is Kilaleshua Sabbath School, but when organized, it will be Seventh-day Adventist Church, Kilaleshua Community. Can we hear amen? amen? In order to do that, there are quite a number of activities that have been lined up so that uh, the organization of the church, you know, have what it would take to bring honor and glory to God. And for that matter, I'm going to let you know that on the Sunday of next Sunday, the 30th, we have a proclamation walk that will be launched here, and we will walk and sending this message that in as much as this Sabbath school has only 30 to 40 active members, and that Sabbath school has no sanctuary, no building like this, and we have not been able to get a physical worship place. We worship in a tent, many children, many youth. When it rains, those of you who have been there, you know what we go through. So we are planning a walk, and this walk should be part of the aid to fundraising towards the sanctuary construction. We are 40, they are both significantly children and youth, but we believe that the Lord shall provide. Can you read it? Can you say it aloud? Just? Right. That is our theme. And that is our persuasion. And we want to appeal to you 
to join us in that belief that though 30 to 40, the Lord shall provide the 10 million that is required to put, to put up a temporary structure for God's worship. And your participation is in the work. Your participation, we've invited a lot of you to attend during our celebration collection and prayer uh, Sabbath on the 6th of May. Please, if you've gotten the invitation, join us. If you have not gotten the invitation, now you have it. Join us. Join us on the walk. Join us on the celebration prayers. Join us on the collections. Join us on the launch. The, the deaconry, as they uh, pass among us the membership, will give you this registration form for the walk. Please join us, even as a family, as a home church, as a department, as an individual, as a spouse about to get wedded. Please join us, you know, so that you identify, you know, with this movement, right? And we believe that by you join us, God will be exalted. Number one. Number two, I have even our children have not been left out. Uh, let me just, Jasmine, just come here and uh, tell us how our children, as few as they are in loving in Kileleshua, are also persuaded that the Lord will provide they just believe and, daughter, tell them what the children are doing so that God is exalted in Kileleshwa. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. So as the children of Kileleshwa, we are baking some goodies uh, to sell. So I will read for you the flavors and the prices. Uh, the flavors that we have for the cakes and the cupcakes are vanilla, chocolate, red velvet, coconut, banana, lemon, and marbled. Uh, one cupcake is uh, 50, and one block is 500. A cookie goes for 10 bob. Uh, so the flavors for the cookies are butterscotch, chocolate chip, uh, vanilla, and chocolate. Uh, they will be, you can order, and then you will find them after the walk. And how will they get the water and the juice to, to consume it with? Um, so I'm not sure if it's the women or the youth, but they are also selling bottles. So you, there are a few Bible verses that you can decide which one you want. And for the colored ones, you can get um, your name on it. Yeah. We also have t-shirts for children. Right. Um, for the young children, we have blue and pink. And then for the adults, we have black, navy blue, and white. Amen, amen. What is, and how do you order? Okay, this is how you order. We will, this registration form, and please support our children. How many promise by God's grace that at least you'll support one child for this course? Amen. So this registration form will be distributed. Uh, give us your details. We will bring it to you. We'll bring it on the day of the walk. That will be flagged off here. And we will also share the virtual registration form in all the platforms. Is that okay? Um, okay, you can now sit down and I do the rest on your behalf. So everybody is involved. So this is from uh, Women Ministries. And, and let me tell you, even this one. Okay, this is my last statement, then I go. So today, as I was coming to church, the, the deaconry desk tell me that, come on, how are you dressed today? Are you promoting ammo? Are you promoting T-shirts? No, but I, the answer is simple, that there, there comes a time when God does unusual things, unusual things. And um, the book of Acts 19.11 says this, and I'll paraphrase, paraf, paraphrase it for purposes of time management. It says that, and in those days, God worked many unusual miracles. Other version says, and in those days, God worked many extraordinary miracles 
in the hands, through the hands of Paul, such that even aprons and handkerchiefs were brought from him to those who are sick, and sickness has left them, and the evil spirits also left them. Brethren, time comes when God does unusual things, and you'll be shocked that just by taking this and participating in this work, that God will do unusual miracles, and the church will be established just because you have participated through a handkerchief, a cup, through a this one, and through a this one. You understand what I mean? Yeah. We have, our job is to avail ourselves, then the result of the work is God's. Because it's about him, it's about his name, it's about his reputation. We will encourage you to support Kilaleshua. Please register, and if, even if, for instance, you don't participate in the work, we will use this for evangelism. Can you imagine, can you imagine dropping this as an evangelism tool to a household, to a family, and just leaving it in the house? The surplus that we will get will use for evangelism because this is urban setting. So our evangelism strategies must be different. How many do promise that by the grace of God, who loved us and who died for us, that we shall support the establishment of Seventh-day Adventist Church, Kilaleshwa community, by a show of hand, so that we can pray for those hands. And let's pray. Our Father and our God, here you are, men and women, who have volunteered to identify with your cause. Those hands, oh Lord, is a testimony that they subscribe to the hope and to the belief that you shall provide, that we only need to believe. As we have spoken it from your word, how much we pray that you use these instruments, Lord, as instruments, as tools, through which you will do unusual things, you will do unusual miracles, so that through them, men and women will not only participate in the organization of the forthcoming Sabbath school, but that as humble as they may look in the form of handkerchiefs, oh Lord, that miracles shall be performed and ultimately even more souls shall be drawn unto your kingdom as we await your soon return. Oh Lord, bless us for the sake of your name, for the sake of your reputation. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and we invite virtual viewers also to be part of this celebration. May the Lord bless you and uh, the worship service will now continue without further announcements. Amen. to our call to worship. Our call to worship is song number 479, Be Silent. Four seven nine. tread softly.
doxologie. Let us pray. There was one that was willing to die in our stead, and Jesus Christ took all our sins and nailed them to the cross. Today, Lord, we come to your presence and ask that in our deficiency, your grace may be sufficient. That we that are weak today may find grace at the foot of the cross. We want to pray in loving tone today. May the power and presence of the Holy Spirit come down. I pray that you break our hearts and mold them in the similitude and man of Jesus Christ. We come against all the forces of darkness in Jesus' name. We pray that may your presence reign again. May you come and fill us, Lord, that all those wandering minds may be brought to the obedience and subject of Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, our song may be, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Bless us now and speak to us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Happy Sabbath. And happy day. Are we happy to be the house of the Lord? It is Adventist Men's Sabbath, and I, on my behalf, and on behalf of all men, we want to welcome you to today's fellowship and Sabbath day. Um, I want to take this moment to, first and foremost, make all men feel welcome. All men, are you there? Please just stand up for me. Let, let them see that we are available. Please just rise up. Rise up and wave to this marvelous congregation. Please wave to men back. Amen. Amen. Be seated. I want to, <clears throat> I want to welcome all of us um, who are participating in today's fellowship and Sabbath. I want to welcome those who are watching virtually. I'm told that we are live on Hope Channel Kenya, and we want to welcome all who are following uh, the program through Hope Channel. Uh, my work is very simple, to introduce those who are officiating and those who are probably visiting us, not for the first time, probably you've not been around for a long time. Uh, we want to take this moment to, to welcome you. May I request those who are visitors today to rise up. We would like to take note of you uh, please be upstanding so that you can recognize you. All visitors who are visiting with us for the first time, and probably uh, you've not been around for a while, we want to take note of you. Please be upstanding. Amen. Amen, my sister. Any other visitor? Amen. I can see some visitors are upstairs. Anyone else? I can see my brother there. Um, you are not many. I'm going to request the dictionary that we have the mics given to our visitors. Please tell us where you come from uh, so that we can know you and fellowship with you. Please let's have two mics upstairs so that we can make our sisters and brothers feel, feel welcome. Okay. I'll start with you, my sister, you have the mic. Please tell us your name and where you come from. 
Happy Sabbath. Yeah, my name is Maureen Maturu. I come from Mombasa North. Great news. Thank you. What do you say to Maureen? Maureen, please feel most welcome. Yes, my sister. Happy Sabbath. My name is Niagwa, and I'm very happy to be here. Praise God. And I, and I live in London. Amen. <laughs> my sister from London, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go right upstairs. We have a sister. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Elizabeth Mwangi, and I'm a member of ECO Lomain. May the Lord bless you. Elizabeth, you're most welcome to fellowship with us. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Mwanda. I do pray in Nairobi South SDA. Very well, Yuan. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, looks like uh, the man invited sisters to grace the, the Amo Sabbath. Yes, my sister, please introduce yourself. Happy Sabbath. I'm Dita Bokomukone from Botswana, residing at Kahawanda. Okay, I'll not at attempt to mention the name, <laughs> but please feel most welcome. One more. One more. Man, you're doing well. This is good. You invited our sisters to grace our fellowship today. Happy Sabbath. I'm Ken Oyo, Mishumoroni Church, Mombasa. Thank you, my brother from Mombasa. You're most welcome. Is there anyone here, down here? Yes, my brother, please introduce yourself. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. And very happy today to be here in Lebanon 27 day Adventist Church. Uh, I'm by name Mobir Gag Mobir from South Sudan. I'm used to work in uh, Juba Central Church in South Sudan. And I'm happy to be here and thank you. Very well. We are happy to have you, my brother from South Sudan. Thank you. Anyone still down here? Please help me to see. Very good. I'll go upstairs. There's a gentleman. Please, uh, let's have the mic this side. It is special to take note of our visitors. Loving Todd is a loving church, and we take our visitors very seriously. That way we can fellowship with them. Happy Sabbath, happy day. My name is Lisa from Mombasa, Nyali, Nyali SD. Thank you, Lisa from Nyali. Um, and I'm Arnold, I came with him. Thank you. Okay, thank you, my brother. You're most welcome. All right, I think we've finished uh, the visitors. Um, visitors, on my behalf, on behalf of all men, when you go back to your churches, uh, next Sabbath, please pass our greetings. Um, I want to introduce uh, the team who are officiating uh, to start with our vial music group who have come to grace the occasion. I'll ask the leader in charge. You can all stand up, but I'll ask one of you to greet the church. You can use my microphone or if there's none there. Do you have one? Hi church. Happy Sabbath. We have our music from the Technical University of Kenya, SDA Church. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll come right in front here. We have uh, uh, Brother Philip Omolo, who is doing for us the sign language today so that you can communicate with everybody. Um, we have our amazing choristers uh, lifted from the best within men ministry. What do you say to them? Was the singing amazing today? Amen. And our pianist, we welcome you uh, for, 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 your, for your ministry. We thank you for your ministry. Um, those who will serve you today, um, 
we have Brother George Sumbua. George, stand so they, they can see you. Very well. That is George. George is going to give us the children's story. He's an amazing young man. And uh, we have our treasurer, Brother Victor Ogechi, who is going to do a promotion for treasury. Um, next to the treasurer is Brother Bruno. Bruno Wino is going to call the, the, the songs and read the scripture. Uh, Bruno also happens to be Adventist man council member representing the youth in the AMO. Next to Bruno is Brother Kevin Mayaka. Uh, Kevin is also a council member and one of our members. Uh, Kevin, I think uh, he wants to use the mic to greet you. Happy Sabbath. Men, you are welcome for our program and our 12 week program for the on becoming a man. Biamono. Thank you very much. Um, Brother Kevin is going to call the, uh, the, the, the offer tree. Um, I'm going to introduce Pastor shortly, but just to very briefly tell you about the men mentorship program that we are launching tomorrow. Uh, it's a 12 week program. We promoted it for the last uh, two months, I think, so to speak. This program is meant to have men speak to each other based on a researched curriculum running for 12 weeks. You will not do wrong to be part of that program. Right behind me, you can see the details of that program. Tomorrow, we have men prayer breakfast. It is meant for everyone all men, whether you've registered for the 12 week on becoming a man a mentorship program or not. Ladies, ladies, are you there? Ladies, are you there? Tomorrow in the morning, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. If I don't see them, I'm going to blame you. Please let the men come forward tomorrow for the breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning so that you can be able to organize and launch the program, all of us, then those who have registered or who are interested to register will be able to um, uh, continue the program moving forward. Allow me to introduce um, Pastor Kennedy Mfune. Pastor Mfune uh, comes to us from Zambia. He's a Zambian has lived in Kenya for some times. Uh, Pastor will, will tell us how long, because that's where Hili you speak. I don't think you learned it in, uh, in a year. It is too refined. I can't speak the way he speaks Swahili. He's currently based in, uh, in Rwanda. And um, in Rwanda, previously here, he was with a ministry called NAPS uh, Ministry that is sponsored by the Oakwood, Oakwood University. Now he is in New Vista Adventist International School uh, in, in, in Rwanda as the school chaplain. Uh, I, I once heard him speak, and I felt that it would be um, a blessing for him to, to speak uh, on, a men's, uh, on a men's Sabbath like this. Pastor is blessed with a wife and uh, four children, uh, three girls and, and one boy. Pastor is going to speak to us today. And Pastor will speak to us again in the afternoon because we have a very interactive program you don't want to miss. We have a panel discussion on uh, the role of mentorship, why men need mentorship. After that panel, with some interludes of music, Pastor will do another service, a short service in the afternoon. So you will do well to fill these um, chairs the way they are filled right now. Amen? May the Lord bless you. My name is uh, Brother Ben Omolo. I'm a member of this church and the leader for Adventist Men Ministry. God bless you.
Praise God. Praise God again. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. Uh, the chapter is 27. The verse is 20. Genesis chapter 27, verse 20. And the Bible reads, But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. I'll read that again. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. May God bless the reading, and I'll invite the choristers to lead us in worship. Hymn number 516, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way, my Savior lives. those who have a prayer need to just make a step of faith next to where you are. Um, feel free if you want to kneel or if you want to stand, make yourself comfortable as we sing just one stanza of sweet hour prayer as you talk to God yourself and then you go into a short prayer session.
everlasting Father in heaven. The heavens declares your glory and the firmament shows your handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night reveals your knowledge for there is no language where your voice is not heard. This morning, precious Lord, your children have come to worship you. We want to pray, Heavenly Father, that you may search our lives. And if there be, King of Kings, anything in our lives that might hinder our prayers from reaching a throne of grace, may you lead us to a way everlasting. I want to bring Lovington SDA Church into your presence at this moment. I want to bring all our brothers and sisters who are watching virtually from wherever they are, that Lord, as you bless us, precious Lord, do not pass them by. We want to thank you for each and every member who is represented here. We want to pray, Almighty God, that you may remain God in our lives. Heavenly Father, we have needs and petitions you know our needs before we mention them. And you give us a promise that if we who are sinful know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will you give the Holy Spirit when we ask? At this moment, at this time, we want to invite the presence and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to take control of our fellowship this morning. That Lord, every word that may be uttered here every song that will be sung, every thought that shall be embraced may be subjected to you and to you alone. We want to pray for those who may be sick amongst us that, Lord, you may stretch your healing hands upon them. We want to pray, Lord, for those who are struggling spiritually that, Lord, you may fill us. You tell us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst in spirit, for they shall be filled. May you fill us. We pray, Lord Almighty, for those who are mourning, precious Lord. You say, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. May you comfort your children. We've had cities of deaths in this family. We continue to uplift and bring um, the family of Sister Margarita, who was laid to rest yesterday. We want to bring the family of El, uh, Pastor Makori, that Lord Almighty, and many other families that we may not uh, be aware of, that Lord, you may give them special comfort. We want to pray, King of Kings, that, Lord, you may remember men in this church. Your Bible tells me that blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. That, King of Kings, when we eat the labor of our hands, we shall be happy. That our children shall be like all you plants surrounding our table. Precious Lord, we pray that you may bless every man in this church today. That you may bless every family in this church today. That, King of Kings, you may transform us and make us suitable instruments of your work and of your service. And this morning, precious Lord, as your man servant, Pastor Mpune, speaks to us, may you put your words in his mouth. May it be a testimony that we indeed spent time with you. May you meet us at our various points of need, and may you fill us that, Lord Almighty, this may be a testimony now and forevermore. We worship and glorify you because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Sabbath one more time. Uh, there's a lost Bible here, brand new Bible. We got it in the uh, lesson class at the back there, so you can reach out to us after this. It's time for offerings, tithes and offering. We thank God for enabling us to be here this day. We thank God for the gift of life and for the gift of good health. We are continuously promoting the On Becoming Man uh, mentorship program. We had these forms, which I think most of you are given. So if you have a young man in your house, 16 years and above, who needs to be mentored, please we ask that you collect these forms from the deaconry desk if you are not able to be given when you're coming in. So that we can have this man, uh, rather this man, registered and come and attend our attend our mentorship program. So you have this form, you fill in your names and drop it in the offertory box, the times of collection. Thank you. We are reading from the book of uh, Malachi, the famous book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. It says, do not rob God Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. So we ask that we give our tithes and offerings. Many a times we are blessed, but we've never thought of returning tithes and offering. Try the Lord now and see his hand of mercy and blessings pour out to you. So the deacons and deaconesses come forth and collect the offerings as I call our treasurer, Brother Ogechi, to come and do a promotion. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, as we do the collection, just uh, reminding us that we have different channels. We have the Mpesa uh, bank and even the PDQ, and you can give uh, cash. So as this uh, collection is going, I'll be presenting the Treasury report for uh, March 2023. As it's projected, I uh, just want to thank us for the continued support that you've given uh, us through your giving. Uh, it's, it's because of your giving that you're able to run the various services in the church and we thank God for you, and we continue praying for your continued uh, faithfulness. So in the first slide, we're going to see uh, our collection uh, uh, in the various categories. The first category is the trust funds. Uh, these are funds that we collect uh, in trust, which are forwarded up to the uh, higher levels of the church uh, to the conference all the way up. So for um, uh, March, we collected 8.86 million, uh, 6.73 in February, and 8.1 million in uh, January. These are funds that are not spent at local church level. They are funds that are forwarded uh, to the high hierarchy of the church. So we just hold them in trust. Uh, what we spend at local church is what is called LCB. LCB is local church budget, and CDC is uh, the development of funds. So I've combined those two, uh, because remember when we did our budgeting, we uh, uh, presented a figure that all of us are contributing towards and this is inclusive of uh, local church budget and capital expenditure uh, um, 
budget. So you can see from that slide, uh, January, we collected 3.36 million, uh, February, 2.37 million, and in March, 5.8 million. And we just want to thank you members for your continued giving. And the, because this is where we, uh, the funds that we use to run the church. Uh, next slide, you can see by the time uh, March, we are preparing this report. We had uh, the three Sabbath schools, but now Westlands has been organized into a church. So uh, how has been the giving across the three Sabbath schools and the mother church? Most giving uh, is through uh, mother church level, uh, but that slide also gives the breakdown of the giving across uh, the three Sabbath schools. This is the giving, total giving, both uh, trust funds and local church, local church giving. Uh, here to date, how has been our collection? Uh, you can see from that slide, it's, uh, God has continued to bless us. Uh, you can see growth all the way uh, from 2021, 2022, 2023. Uh, look at trust funds. 2021, year to date collection was 17.8 million. Uh, 2022, and this is year to date is March, um, comparing March, January, February, March for the three years. Uh, 2022, 20 million. 2023, uh, this has gone up to 23.7 million. Uh, for the local church, the funds that we spend here, uh, 2021, 5.1 million. Uh, 2022, 9.2 million. And 2023, uh, 11.6 million. So I just want to thank uh, for your continued support. You can see how uh, we've been, our giving has improved over uh, the three years. Uh, in terms of our collect, uh, how do we collect our funds? Uh, 2021, 78% of our giving was at trust fund level, uh, which has now dropped to 69 and 67. Uh, so on average, about 70% uh, of our giving is at uh, local is, is at trust funds, and 30% uh, on average is is at uh, local church level. On the next slide, we see uh, how do we give. Most of our giving, about 91%, is at cashless level. Uh, this has been giving because in, in subsequent, in previous presentations, you see our cash giving has averaged about uh, 5%, but now it has gone to 9%. Uh, just continue appealing to us. Uh, let's continue give uh, cashlessly. And as you give, uh, also remember to allocate. Uh, if you are giving through M-Pesa, you can just put... Uh, uh, the account number, you can put your intention. If it's trust funds, just write, for example, tithe. If it's LCB, you can just say LCB, or even annual every member response. It's important that we allocate, because we have had to call our members to ask uh, how their giving should be allocated. So as you give, kindly remember to allocate. Uh, payments, now let's look at the payments. Uh, trust funds, these are funds that are held and forwarded to the higher hierarchy of the church. So on that slide you can see uh, for trust funds, 7.27 million in, in uh, January, 7.29 in February, and 9.19 in March. Uh, those are trust funds that we uh, forwarded to the higher hierarchy of the church. Uh, what we spent locally, we spent 2.89 million in uh, January, 3.7 in February, and 2.97 million in March. Uh, this is, these are figures for 2023. Uh, so how is the payment been spread out? Uh, it's spread out across uh, the three Sabbath schools and also at uh, Mother Church level, which is here. Um, uh, most of these payments have been done at, at Mother Church level. So uh, these slides, we are going to see a detailed breakdown 
of how local church funds have been spent for the March of for the month of March uh, 2023. Uh, Sabbath schools, we have uh, various Sabbath schools that we've supported. And in March, uh, Kilelesha Sabbath School was organized into a church. And we gave a contribution of 500,000 shillings. This is part of what we have budgeted to support uh, the Sabbath school as they become into churches. I remember we approved uh, that by God's grace and through our giving, once a Sabbath school is organized into a church, we are able to uh, give them an exit package of 200,000, and we've started with uh, Westland, and we'll do this as, as time goes by to the tune of uh, 2 million that was uh, voted and approved by us to each Sabbath school once it's organized into a church. Also, we have various uh, areas of evangelism that we support, uh, which are listed. Uh, we supported various churches, and uh, this totaled to about 987,000 for March. Uh, the second item is deaconry. Uh, these are the utilities bills that we pay for, for here. Uh, there's electricity, there's the water, and then Admir and HR, we have uh, staff, and we have also other administrative costs. For March, we spent 261,000. Uh, security, we have various security providers. We uh, spent 232,000. Uh, PMD, PMD is Personal Ministries Department. This is the department that is tasked with evangelism activities. Uh, we spent 232,000 for the month of uh, March. Uh, welfare, we have a welfare uh, kitty where we support our members in various times. We spent 100,000, 130,000 shillings for the month of March. Uh, the others is Pathfinders, uh, AYM, uh, Pastorate, uh, Adventurers, uh, Stewardship, uh, Stewardship Week of Prayer. Uh, so we, we are spending across the various uh, uh, departments. And, and these slides give us a breakdown of how the funds have been spent. Uh, similar to that, this is the giving across uh, the various departments uh, in our church. So thank you so much for your continued support, and God bless us. Uh, year to date, in terms of uh, how these payments have been made, um, you see, yes, our giving has also increased. Our payments also and our expenditures have gone up because uh, we are post the covid uh, time and more and more expenditures is going towards uh, the department. Uh, trust funds, uh, these are not spent at local church level. Uh, they are uh, forwarded to the higher hierarchies of church. For local church, um, you see we spent 7.6 million uh, in 2021. That's year to date. Uh, the first three months of 2021. Uh, 6.2 6.8 million 2022, uh, the first three months also. And the first three months of this year, we've spent 9.6 million. And this has been possible through your continued giving. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and God bless all of us. Happy Sabbath Church. This is called Adventist Men Chorale. It's a new singing group in uh, Lovington. We are still recruiting, all right? So feel most free to be part of this fellowship. May the Lord bless you. Good day. 
Thank you, the Amor Choral, for the beautiful singing. Did they sing well? Asante. So if you want more of this, please come in the afternoon. Um, it's time for the offertory response. Please rise. Let's pray. Our dear Lord, we give you praise and honor. Thank you for the offerings. How we pray that you bless us more so that we can also give more. For it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As my brother George Sumbua come forth for the children's story, we are reminded about the Kileleshua Sabbath School. There are t-shirts running for going for 1,000 shillings and the registration. Uh, more information is the registration forms. We can get them at the Dickondry desk. Thank you very much. So we are reminded to register for the run for the Kilelesha Sabbath School fundraiser. Thank you. Happy Sabbath Church. Happy day. Today I will tell you a story of a very wise king. A long time ago, there lived a very wise king, as I have just said. He was so wise, he knew most things about the environment about him, the animals, the trees, the plants, and many more. Now, one breezy day, a, a bee was flying in the kingdom of this king. The wind uh, blew so strong that the bee ended up in the king's palace. The, king, uh, the bee begged for its life as he knew that the king was, uh, had a lot of power. The king was shocked at how uh, such a little bee could help him because the bee was pleading for his life and saying, I will serve you in any way. So the king let the bee go. A, a few days later, the people of the kingdom gathered in the king's palace because a queen from a foreign land was visiting. In this country of Kenya, when other dignitaries visit, um, the band of the, the Kenya National Band stands at the airport to welcome him. That's what they did. The queen really um, came to discover about the king's wisdom, and he wa she was testing it with riddles, uh, tricky questions, and all, but he answered them all. So one day, 
she gave the queen uh, she, he, she the queen gave the king an emerald in in this emerald there was a small hole in the center for those who do not know what an emerald is an emerald is a precious stone it is just like a diamond from um now um the queen asked the king to pass a thread through this hole and the king being wise he told the silkworm to pass through the hole and as the silkworm was moving a thread a line of thread followed through another day uh, uh, the queen put 50 boys and 50 girls in a room and she told the king to distinguish them the king was very smart, so he told his servants to take a hundred water bowls into the room. He told the children to not make it a race. Then he told them to wash their faces. Boys naturally, boys naturally being competitive, they went to quickly wash their faces as the girls just dipped their fingers in the water. At this point, the queen became a very big nuisance and she was getting annoyed. So they came up with a plan to stop the king. Her craft, she told her craftsmen to craft 99 flowers so that the king could get confused. One day, he was having a big feast and the queen went on the podium and said, there are 100 flowers here, 99 are real, and not 99 are fake and one is real. Can you tell which one it is? There are flowers here on stage. Can I try to tell which one is real? I'm not as wise as the king, guys. <laughs> so the bee that I mentioned at the start of the story came back and helped the king. Because bees pollinate flowers, the bee instantly told which one was real. Sadly, I don't have a bee here with me. And yes, truly, for this was King Solomon, the son of David. When Solomon prayed for wisdom, instead of riches, God said, I will do what you have asked, and I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor, nor will there be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no among equal kings. I will read from James chapter 1, verse 5. And it says, If any of you lack wisdom, with, uh, let him ask for God who gives all liberty and without reproach and it will be given to him. God is the provider of all wisdom. So children and parents, if you're not wise, pray for wisdom. Shall we pray? Our kind and everlasting Father, thank you for the story that I have just told. Please help us apply these uh, philosophies in our daily lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I invite the special guest choir, the Amo Choral, to come and give us the special item.
What do you say to some technical issues? Uh, I hope the technicians are making everything possible to bring us to normalcy. What do you say for the Amo men? Amen. I love Amo. How do Amo? The only problem I have, and you don't crucify me for this. Every church I go to, Amo must sing with books and. Uh, I don't know why, but I understand sometimes because men are men. They want everything to be done with details. So they want to be sure of what they're doing. We bless the name of the Lord for that song and pray that the good Lord continue to bless this great army of the Lord. I bring you greetings from uh, the most beautiful woman in this equator. The love of my life, my instrument, my frequency, the magnet of my heart, my lorry pop, my honey bun. <laughs> One day I'll bring her and you agree with me that she's a pretty girl. Very pretty. I think uh, uh, the mother to George will bear witness that in Tonga, that's a land of Shunem, where if you go to Zambia, the most beautiful women found in Tonga land. She's saying amen. <laughs> She's uh, the love of my life and I love her so much. And um, also God has blessed me. I think he made a miss. It's not really, but uh, I have three boys, not three girls. Three, I call them, the th I have three Hebrew boys and one Shunammite girl. That's my family. So they greet you from Kigali, Rwanda. And uh, like he has introduced me, 
I'm a Zambian, but living now in Kigali, but again with some blood of Kenyanism. Because Kenya always be home. I've been in this country for, I think it was getting to 12 years. Yes, and I love this nation. Yesterday when I landed at uh, Jomo Kenyatta, I said, well, I'm back, it's good to be back home. I told my friend Calvin, I said, this is home. Yes, so home is home and I'm happy. The Lord is good. And all the time, the Lord is good and that is nature. I know you are so many of you, but let me try a bit kisses. I know they're in the house. Abana banyasai, biyamono. Na ko kire kubarora. Makaribu ase kumkutano orero. Do we have the lures around? Jochit nyasai waya ore. Aero kamano nyasai ukwede. Do we have the cuckoos around? Uh, Shana Shagai, Muriega. Nidake na kuwaona. I want to so to greet, but Maasai's are not many in our churches. I don't know what is happening. Uh, Maasai's, they say, Suba. Yeva, Mrs. Yesu. That's how they come in. Then the Kambas, uh, Nesa, Mamukate. Uh -huh. You know. We have lawyers and Zambians have one thing in common. We love Ugali both like Norman's business. <laughs> Good people. Shivara Shivara, Mwana Murembe. Yes, we, we are grateful to God and uh, uh, we thank God so much. Uh, those from Zambia, we say Mulibwanji, Mulibuti, Twarumbaga Pati Gumibona, and uh, the members Mulishani. To our Totila Mukwai and to everyone that is, and to every one of us, Mungu ni Mwema. Na siku zote. Nimefry sana kuwaona. Hapa nimerudi nyumbani kapsa. Na nataka anasema ka chonjo, masambaya. Yeah, so you sit nicely as we get into God's word. And we thank God for everything. I want to thank God for coming to Lovington SDA. Seven that Venice Church. They told me Lovington is a special church because their people speak to their children in loving tones. And uh, is it true? Ah, special church. So thank you so much. I want to thank my brother Omolo. He uh, invited me. I've enjoyed my stay so far. You know, let me say this without being tribalistic. Lures are lures. <laughs> I say to be a lure is a software. A Lua has never been to Nairobi. Even if they come the first time, they behave as if they have lived in Nairobi all their life. <laughs> Just convert the software. They, they, have, they want to, be, to do things with details. He wrote details, how I would come, where I would go, what would happen. Details, and we, we bless the name of the Lord for that. I want to thank also Mama Luyando for the hospitality. I pray that God blesses you. And above all, Kelvin. Aye, Kelvin has been good. This man, Otara, is it Otara? Yeah, good. The only, we need to pray for him. Yeah, so that, that song can be sung one day. Here there comes the bride in this very church. Yeah, so, but we, we, we love you and uh, we thank God. I've met also Gerard Busire, good man, good man, good man, good man. Gerard Busire and uh, other elders I've met here, and uh, many others, and to all of us that are watching us online uh, and uh, Hope Channel, yes, in the same uh, Hope Channel, we say God bless you, and uh, thank you so much. But uh, before even I begin, I've met a family here. You know, uh, there are, if you look at the Pupa team, all oh, those are, are Kenyans, but there's a Zambian boy there uh, called George, who has been Somehow converted, but he's still a Zambian in the blood. <laughs> yes, the mother and they are here, and uh, we thank God. So at least when things become hard, I have people to rescue me. Yes, thank you so much, and uh, uh, God bless you. Because of time, we need to go straight into God's word. God's word. And just a reminder, it's not, it's New Vision International Adventist School. That's where I'm coming from, and bring greetings from there. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis. 
Genesis chapter 27, verse 20. If you are there, you say amen. If you are not there, say please wait for me. Genesis chapter 20, sorry, 27, verse 20. If, are you there? Okay, this is what the Bible says in verse 20. Isaac said, sorry, Isaac said to his son, how is it that you found it so quickly? My son. He said, because Yahweh, your God, gave me success. Isaac said to his son, how is it you found it so quickly, my son? He said, because Yahweh, your God, gave me success. May the good Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We pray that now as we go in the discourse of this word, May your presence and mercy come on loving tone today. That as his word will come, fill us with your presence and your spirit. May I diminish as you increase. Speak through me that the echoes of Christ shall be heard in my voice. Thank you, Lord, for everything. It is in Jesus' name we pray. I know when you have a bulletin, you discover the scripture reading is quite different. And there's the, the, the topic different, but I want to say this was, it was supposed to be close that door, but I thought we should let the doors remain open for now, then we might close them in the evening. Yes, thank you. Allow me to speak on a subject entitled, You Are So Quick. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you are so quick. No, they didn't get tell them, you are so quick. Under the theme, becoming a man. Each one of us today wants to become a man. Everyone, you feel good because before then, a small boy, a small boy playing with the friends, a small boy with mucus, a small boy who is dejected, a small boy who many times when you meet your friends, they, they underrate you because of your age. Sometimes they bully you because of maybe you're the stature, but you desire. One day I must become a man. Men always have ambitions and aspirations. I see young boys today who say, Pastor, Range Rover Sports One is my dream car. When I grow up and become a man, all I'll buy it. I'll be seated here and my wife will be next to me. They want to become man. They want to become men. I, I see young boys that will tell you, one day when I have a lot of money, I must fly and get to Spain, Madrid. Because they know these are things that men do. Because they say in this world we live in, brothers and sisters, it's like the issue of Charles Darwin is clear. Survive of the what? Of the fittest. And every man knows if you're not successful, there is nothing that is there for you. That's a reason there is a lot of migration to the cities. Everyone wants to say, Mimi manze tunaenda kanairo. Because they believe. In Kanairo, that's where success is. Everyone thinks success is in Nairobi because men are distinguished and are made clear in Nairobi. They are not distinguished in Leo Bonyo. Mm -mm. They say it's in Nairobi. It's not in Oriang. Ah, uh -uh. It's not in Mutuapa. No, neither in Malaba. They say Nairobi. Therefore, we see a story the Bible introduces to us of two twins, Jacob and Esau. In a time when the daddy or the father is about to die, there is a rush of getting a blessing because that blessing qualifies you to be a man. You have a tag in society because all the goodies of success goes with that blessing. And you know that now because I have the blessing, I become that man. And therefore, as Isaac is about to close his history on earth, 
A blessing must be given. It comes to Esau because according to a Hebrew culture, the firstborn is the one to get the blessing. Therefore, there's a blessing of the Hebrew culture, but there's a prophecy. God had said the, 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 the older will save the younger. And as quickly as, as Isaac is talking to Esau, the mother is listening. Be careful of mothers. Mothers, they listen. Even when you, no one is listening. And she tells the boy, Jacob, because Jacob was mommy's boy. You know that people are mommy's boys? And careful when you marry them, my friend. They will tell you, my mother never did things like this. You know when they tell you, when they tell, you, tell they ask them, am I your mother? I'm not your mother, excuse me, look me clear. So it happened, beloved friends, that as the mother tells my friend, the blessing is going, success is going. You will not be a man any, if you want to get to the stage and position, I want you to be, come quickly. Bring a goat, they slaughtered it, and then it says, you go cook it nicely, you must serve your father, bless him. Say, mama, mama, no, 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 mama, mama, listen, because my brother's hairy body says, don't worry, I have this fixed. Women fix things, my friends. Women, I love you so much, but what I'm going to say must not break our friendship. Listen to me. One writer said, uh, ever God, ever, from the time God ever he created a woman, he has never rested. I don't know why. But, but, but they know how to fix things again, positive, negative way. So she tells, that don't, it's on me, don't worry. She covers, there's always a plan B, you know, the hair now of the God covers the boy, says, now you can go and give him. And as he comes and says, Daddy, I've come, bless me. This is Esau. But he says, my son, how is it that you found it quickly? And he says, because your God, Yahweh. He's not saying my God. He's saying your what? Because he's saying, look, as far as I'm concerned, I have no God. Because I know uh, this whole thing, uh, if, if I say my God, definitely there is a lie. But to make it more right, I would say your God. Now, do you know that your children know you in the house? Have you ever come to the house, there are certain things you don't want your children to watch. Then you find them watching. Then quickly, they say, Daddy has come. They change it and put something that looks like God. They say, Daddy, we are watching things of God because they know you will not complain. Your God, Daddy, is here. Your God is here, Daddy. That's why he's saying, your God gave me success. But how did you find it so? You are quick. In short, he was simply saying, Esau, you are quick. But he's telling a Jacob, you are so quick. Are you so quick, beloved friends, to get success? Are you so quick, beloved friends, to be successful as a man in this world without daring, even with lies, even without disregarding God, by all means necessary, you are saying to yourself, I need to be successful. This is what happens in this, uh, so quick. We are so quick today, and men are quick. If a man leaves his phone at home, then he discovers he has reached Haile Salas Road and the phone has remained. He will not even use the car to go home because he knows there's a lot of traffic jam. He will look for the guy of Boda and say, It's an emergency. The, the guy will come like moving like I don't know. So quick. Because the many, you know, the, the phone, there are many secrets. There are many things. You're saying, oh, and you remember, you have just left your wife in the, in the house. Maybe she has touched it. It does no password. The motto, even the guy says, we have to stop this traffic. Say, my friend, I'll pay. If it's fine, I'll pay. He's so quick. The moment he gets home there, boom, he finds the wife holding the phone. The man is breathing like I don't know. I want my phone. Is that your phone? He says, no, no, no. You left it. I was keeping. Yeah, but before I give you the things you need to explain. Oh, my God. So quick. Are you so quick, beloved friends, in the things that you do? What is it that brings swiftness around you? So quick. 
so quick today. We, we are living in a time today. People will tell you that when this nation began, Swahili was there, very much there, very much there. But Swahili is busy changing so quick. In fact, Swahili will die very soon in this nation if you're not careful. Because the generations of Mulo, you want them to become men. They have adopted shame. So those men we might have in the future, they might just be saying shame. Announcements are dying in shame in church. Then you get show, okay, what is happening? Tunataka kuwa chekivi. You know, I, I, I like Nairobi because Nairobi, there's a lot of life. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, Wagwan, I say, okay, what is happening? These, these are people we are trying to raise to be boys, but they are so quick. He was so quick, beloved friends. I want to say this, beloved friends, that many times when we want to be so quick in this life, it's not bad to be quick, it's not bad to be swift, but be careful in every blessing you are seeking for. One man wrote and said this, if I'm seeking for a blessing in this world, I'd rather go for things that are slow but sure in Jesus. But we, we have left that path, beloved friends. Why? Because we are so quick. We want to get there, we want to be successful. We want to marry very quickly and everything. I know there are people that are here, and don't, don't fight me. There are some people who have been married for 10, 15 years, seated here. They have never paid, not even a single dowry. Do you know, Pastor, we pay bit by bit. Dowry does not end. My friend, how do you stay with a stolen property in your house and you're comfortable? <laughs> and it's, it's not anything. You, you are to pay, but you are so what? Quick. She told her, follow the procedure. You have to come and see my father's home. You have to come and to say, no, 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 that one will do later. You are my wife. So quick. Even the ladies in Nairobi have become so quick. So quick to the extent, beloved friend, that no one, no one cares today. We are so quick. A girl visits a boy. He spends a night. The guy says, you can't go. Can't you extend two more days? The next three, four days, he says, but you see, from the time you came to this house, this house has been superb. Why can't you just stay? She stays one month. And you know, after one month, what happens? Malaria might come in. <laughs> the next thing you meet her, you is a member of Lovington. You meet her passing Kalerwesha. Then you ask her, hey, nowadays you, you, wah, you mean you are here? Yeah, saini kwa kwangu. Kwako. So quick, you just went to visit, now it's your place. My sister, you are so quick. Even at home, they don't know that you are married, but you are married in Nairobi. Back at home, you are single, but in Nairobi you are married. Because you are so quick, are you so quick with things, beloved friends? Raising up a man in this generation, it's not easy. It's not easy because life is quick and everyone is seeking for success. I want to say this, beloved friends, you don't success, success. Listen, many people have talked of being successful and all these things, but I want to say this. Success does not come to you. It waits for you because it has always been there. Where it's supposed, we all take a journey to be successful. But we are so quick. So quick, beloved friends, is a thing. Jacob, he, 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 he comes, but the father tells him, the voice is Jacob. But when I feel the hands, is Esau. And they made sure he was wearing the clothes of the brother. He says, I smell them. Yes, this is, this is Esau. Let me tell you, friends, people plan for evil. And they plan it. But I want to say you, tell you, child of God, that sin will take you more than you're willing to go. Sin will cost you more than you're willing to pay. Sin will make you stay on a position more than you're willing to stay. Today it can be successful. Today it can be okay. Today it can be rosy. Today it can be nice. But the day 
when the judgments of God come, everyone will see them in broad daylight. Your success was secretly done, but your fall will be opened. Why? Because the Lord has to show lessons to many people. We are quick, beloved friends, to acquire things in this life. Why? Without the Lord's blessing. And all we will say, this is in the name of God. That's the reason today we have people in our churches, they will give and give and give, and they will tell you, I'm the one helping the church. I'm the one doing this. I've done this and this. But if you want to ask the source of their monies and everything and how things have happened, man, nobody talks about them. But everyone will just tell them, hey, you are blessed, you are blessed. Hey, ni mungu tu, ni mungu tu. This God is not there. This God is not in there. Becoming a man. Sometimes our society has defined when to become a man is to have a wife, to marry, to begin a family. For sure, because having a family makes you responsible. Somebody said most of the guys who have a lot of money are single guys. Married people are broke. If you check a wallet, a wallet of a single guy and a married man, they're different. A single guy just keeps them. But you responsibility and other things. But I want to say to the young men today, as you want to become a man, don't be so quick. As you're looking for somebody to marry, don't be so quick. And get me right on this one. Don't be so quick. Because many of us are so quick. Let me give you just three tips or four that will help you not to be so quick. Number one, you know, getting a wife is like going to a shop to buy something. So when you get in the shop, you must know the price and the expiry debt. Best before use. This is a debt. There are certain girls you go after them because you are so quick, you don't know it was best used before such a debt. The debt has expired. Because we live in a generation today, you see this girl, she's 20, 21. It's a latest edition, 20s, but the marriage, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she has moved kilometers and kilometers. And, 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 and she comes and says, well, I'm a beautiful girl. I'm only 21. You say, they say, youth begins at 20. I'm a beautiful girl with a portable body, with a Coca-Cola bottle shape. So, yes, she has that. But the problem is she has walked in this world. She has covered kilometers and kilometers. And you just get in. You, you're, it's like a brand new car from Japan. Zero marriage. And you want to go with somebody who has covered 5,000 kilometers. You get in a home, problems come. Because they say, why well, is not moving at my pace? Because you never checked, my friends. It's always important to do that. Number two, you must always have a shopping list. The things you want to do in life. You want to do your education, do your education. You want to invest, do that. By the end of the time, you see, if you go to a shop, your, your list is showing. You know, there are people who write their list so carelessly. It's showing milk, soap, spoon, bread, broom. Now, when they move from milk, they go to they, They'll spend so much time in that shop. Because it's not orderly. Check your list. That's the reason we have youths today in the church that have stayed for many years without getting somebody. Why? Because their list is not right. They call them today as it adult. What, there's a name, special name they have given them. They call them young adults, something like that. Which confuses me because you can't be young and an adult again. But they're just there in their space. Because their list is confusing. They are spending much time. It's not in order. You must know, beloved friends, the things you're doing. You find the guy is supposed to marry. That's when he tells you, I'm going now for my PhD. But he wants, he's supposed to marry. Why? Because he has lost it all. The list is not right. It's important, beloved friends, that you write it right so that even as you're moving and progressing in your life, everything is okay. Number three. As you are to help you not to be so quick when you go to the shop, remember you must have money. 
Because if you break any item, you break it, you get it. You break it, it's yours. But today I see young people getting girls. Again, anyhow, this girl from, from Lovington drops and from, 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 from Central drops new life. So you are breaking them, breaking them. They are yours, my friend. And the problem is you break and you don't marry any of them. Because you, you don't know the price. How worthy is the woman? You don't know until you must appreciate that young man. But we are so quick. So quick was Isaac and so quick is so, so quick was Jacob and so quick we are men of us today. Men, we are quick naturally as men. We are very quick. Any difference with your wife? You are quick, you say, this woman, she's bothering me. I don't know the mistake I made in life. I need to find somebody to comfort me. And you see, by the way, when your woman troubles you, there are girls who are there. They are called them side chicks. I don't know whether any woman gave birth to chickens, but they are there, <laughs> side chicks. They will tell you, Aki anakusumbua, haki ni baya, sita fanya ivo. She was good, but I know she has changed. You as a man, you need to understand that, 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 that you, you want to marry an angel, but get me right, my brother. Get me right that the perfection you are seeking for, every woman is like, because you see, women, of course, have the issues of hormonal balance. Sometimes things, you know, they'll get upset because a human being, if your woman does not get upset, then your wife is not normal. Because they're human beings, it's normal. But you feel, no, she's too much. I'm leaving her. What? You leave her, go to somebody. In fact, that one you're going to, she's worse than your wife. But many of guys, we rush there. We, and we want to find comfort. You know, I'll treat you nicely. There's a place I'm told in Nairobi where men, when they go there, they're treated nicely. You know, this, you know, a guy has a nice house in loving tone. He lives very well. But he goes in a place where um, it's just a small room with a bathroom outside. Taking water there with sleepers. You know that water where you, you're like, try, yeah. You know, and, and there's a shower, nice shower in Lovington. But it's there. And I'm seeking for comfort. I'm seeking for success, for solace. And you know, the lady tells him, when you are done, I can be here too. You know, the moment he said, Mama Lisa, and then she comes, says, okay, get on my back. The guy is given a ride to that house. He says, I've never been given a ride home. So every time he thinks of the ride, he wants to go there. My brother, you're destroying your life. You are destroying life. That's a reason today, beloved friends, love has grown cold in our houses. There is no love in the houses. I don't know the last time you called your wife, honey, sweetheart. Many of them, we call these women by their names. Imagine she was called the same name at Credo Row, kindergarten, nursery, grade one, form whatever. You, same name, even in the houses, same name. It's important to spicy the name of your wife because it brings more love in the house. But most of us, you say, mom, is she your mother, my friend? <laughs> Some they say, Alice. Alice, and there are so many Alices there, what will happen? You know, you have some name as a gentleman. You know, it's good sometimes to be a man. You just say, hey, baby girl, come over. Sweetie, my honey pan, my lollipop, let's get it right. It's important, but you see, many of us, we, we want to, you are young, but you want to prove as if you're old. But you're young, my friend. Have some language, have some vibe. But most of us, nothing. That's a reason your woman is ever upset because in that house there is no vibe. But if you imagine she's upset and then you are just coming from the office, you say, hey, baby girl, the most beautiful woman. Even if she's upset, she just said, well, woman in Malisa too. <laughs> and I said, because there's a way this guy has come home. But the men of us, nothing like that. One day, a priest at a seminar for men, he asked them, do you love your wives? They said, yes. He said, I want you to send text messages to your wives. When you send them, then quickly bring that I check the replies. So he wanted, he, he did five of them sample, the men gave. And he told them with simple instructions, tell your wife, I love you, baby. I love you, honey. I love you, my love. That was simple. Everyone, baby, honey, love. There, there's one that caught his attention. The woman replied, are you sure? This is not a wrong number. 
Because she has never, she, the man had never said those words to the wife. Says we will jamame kosea. Because he has never, this is so mysterious. It's important as men, write some messages to your wives. Even when you go for work, just say, baby, I'm in the office now. I may see you, but I'm just there. I'll be home. Ask during lunch, what have you eaten? But some men, the moment the wife calls in the day, he picks the phone. Allow, allow the sister to greet you. Allow to know how you're doing. We are always afraid, I don't know. We are like a snake in the corner. That is just scared that somebody might strike. We are always afraid. We don't want anything. Because you fear now, because you see, they fear that women always say, I want this, this, no, this is not there. It's a news that is coming of, that requires you to, bring, to do something. But beloved friends, it's, it's important. It's important even us as men, as you live in that house, know even the size of the shoe that your wife wears, the skirt, the dress. I know some will say, Pastor, what on a badisha, sazigino, on a nona, sazigino, on a kuwa. It's okay, but it's important for you. It's important. Because I see men sometimes who go on to buy shoes for their wives. The guy asks, what size? And I'm not sure, let me call her. What size do you wear? Hey, baby, you want to, don't waste my time. I'm asking the size. <laughs> it's important for, if you have to prove as a man. But I want to tell you as well, women, get me right. Get me, the, get, get this, women. I want to tell you as well, you must know the kind of a man that you have in the house. If you are married to a doctor, you are all sick in that house. You must know this. You be treated as patients. You do something, he knows the wire is not right. <laughs> if your husband is a teacher, you're all students in that house. Even when you clean, he says, you don't do it this way, you do it this way. The problem is accountants. Because accountants, it's not easy. The, 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 you come and say, honey, cooking was finished. Then he asks you, how many liters did we buy? We bought five. So how many do you, millimeters do you use per day? <laughs> By one week. He has to calculate. So it depends the man that you have. If your husband is a policeman, you are all suspects. It doesn't matter <laughs> whether you are the wife. So these guys, some of the professionals they have, they have gotten into them that when they get there, they forget they're not running their company or institution. They're in their house. They, feel they want to treat you just like their subjects. No, let me say, beloved friends, when you get home, whether you're a doctor, whether a teacher, whether an accountant, whether an engineer, you're a husband in that house. You are somebody's father. You must humble yourself. Don't tell us because now you're an engineer, you have studied too much. You want to explain things to your wife. She, she's even confused. You are a scientist. You say, no, no, honey, you need to understand this thing. I know our child is not okay, but the, the medulla oblongata is, is not right. Yeah, he, be, he behaves like one who has studied entomology. Now the woman is looking at her and says, what is this guy talking about? What kind of a man are you, beloved friends? But we are living in a time today again, do you know there are women who beat their husbands? Huh? Do you know that? Yes. Oh, somebody saying yes for me. Jaribu kufanya makosa utajua. Some women are tough because they want you to be a man and the right man. There's no woman that, your wife will never be against you. The thing she does is to make you a better man. But now the problem you have made are your enemy. She's there to support you. Women are like that. But there are some who are tough. If you make any mistake, they'll fix you. Because you see those women that are big, they sit on you. No one will take you out. Maybe the chief of the area will come and rescue you. <laughs> they will tell you, I'll fix you. I want you to become the man. Become the what? A man that I married, a man that I want. Not this nonsense you are doing. There's a woman who was in, you know, if, but let me say this. Women, again, sometimes let's, let's repent, friends, and become Christians. You know that women who are nice in church, but in their homes, I'm telling you, my brother is not having it easy. 
That's why you see he comes so early to church because he works for the Sabbath all the time to find some refuge here. The Sabbath is over. The man is just seated in church. I know we are praying, seeking God still because he's wondering, if I get there, what will happen? This man was taught by the wife, you must be coming by six. You must be here. The man, if he delays, he will be beaten. Beaten badly one day. And the woman, she was a Sabbath school superintendent. So the guy went to, goes to the pastor and says, sir, I'm a man, but you see, it's so shameful to speak to my friends and tell them this is what is happening. But, pastor, I've been beaten and beaten. By who? By my wife. Says you. Talk of somebody else. You mean that woman who does so pretending well that the church is moved at the same woman? There are women who are angels in church but demons in their homes. Says the same woman. Says yes. The pastor says today you stay at my place. Until evening we'll go there. The man was going at 10. The woman was just waiting. 10. Says today I'm finishing this guy. And she had attendance. The moment he comes, she switches off the lights and hits him nicely that nobody comes to rescue him. So the pastor said, you stand just me. I'll go to knock. It's me that want to go. So I ask where you have been. So she knew that every knock that comes, it's him. Oh, my God. The moment she opened, it was a blow to the pastor. Kick. He was just moving like a sack. Bah! When the husband saw this woman who finished the pastor, she... With the voice says, Alice, you know, you know the husband, the voice of your husband says, what have I done? Switching on the light, the pastor was bleeding. Would you go to church the next Sabbath? Would you go to superintend? Would you still go to the same church? I'm sure she never went there again. But there are women who behave like that. That is your husband, my friend. Let me tell you one thing. For a man, no matter how you tell him you love him, if you don't respect him, that love counts to nothing. Man, they want their respect and their space. All these guys you're seeing here, they want their respect. When they get to the house, just the way William Ruto is treated in state house, their house is their state house. When they get there, they want to know that the president, his excellence has arrived. And the treatment must be first class. Food has been prepared. Water is there. And I wonder sometimes, women, are we so busy that we can't massage these men? Do some massage. Because this guy has traveled. This guy has been working the whole day. This guy has been stressed up by the boss. He needs a bit of massage. Take him in the bedroom and say, sit, baby boy. Men, no matter how they grow, they want to be treated like baby boys. Then begin to massage them and say, how was your day? Massage them. Get to their toes, stretch them. They, they love it that way. These excellences around. No, no, don't pick any cause. No matter who calls there, don't pick them because you are taking care of his excellence. Your husband, the president of that house. And it's always important. You know, sometimes you treat them, you go out of your way. Instead of them drinking the juice or the uji, just tell them, open your mouth. I'll do it. They're open and they're drinking. Let me tell you one thing. They will not be quick to move out. They will not be quick to make foolish decisions. I get surprised because sometimes men get to home, even a hug is not there. There are some men, they can't remember the last time they were hugged. That's the reason when they come to church, they hug everyone. Why? Because this guy is starving. He's starving. Hug them. Hug this brother. Tell them it is well. <laughs> Don't feel good. But the problem, nothing. Don't you think, who, do you, don't you think they need that hug? They do. But you have put them aside. It's important in every house, beloved friends. It's important. Every house, that hug, the man always looks forward to that hug. But you see, women will tell you this, that pastor, why we don't hug? Where there is stress and no success, hugs will never come. Because, listen, friends, women, all of us have five senses. Do you know that? But I always say sometimes women have six. The sixth one is this. A woman can smell money. Money. Same, <laughs> Uya 
And you wonder, and for sure that's the truth. When you're broke, they will not. That's why some people say, we, some men, why they're not getting it right? It's only that they're just broke. There's no man who is ugly. Some men are just broke. That's what they're saying. And this is a world and generation we live in today, beloved friends. Because of being so quick with things, beloved friends, as we close on this one, Jacob's story, we know it very well. He's getting a blessing in the name of success. Everyone in each and every house, a man wants to be successful. But beloved friends, as we desire to be successful, there is a million dollar question is, is are we raising that man? We have children in our houses. Children, we want them to become men. Children in loving tone, we want them to become men. Are we raising them to become those men. Oh, there is a man who was asked the question, tell me the future of your children. The man sat down and said, yes, the future of my children, when I see it, I'm a successful man. He was successful, but he said, the future of my children is this, because my grandfather walked 10 miles to work, and my, 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 my father, he walked five, five, five miles, and me now, I'm driving a Ferrari. My son will drive a Mercedes-Benz. My, 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 my grandson will do a lemon. But my great-grandson will walk again. Then I asked him, but how is it? And the man responded, tough times create strong men. And strong times create easy times. And easy times create weaker people. And weaker times create tough times. You might be successful today. I'm not a prophet of doom. You might be successful today, but I can assure you, maybe your, your, your generation will walk again. You might be living in loving tone. Maybe your generation, someday, I'm not a prophet of doom. They might find themselves in Mkuru Kwajenga. And you wonder, how did it happen? You never raised men. We never, I hear men who say, I don't want my children to go what I went through. I had a difficult life. Who told you that life will be easy? It will ever be difficult. Even Jesus told us in John 16, 33, that I tell you this before, in this world there will be many tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. It will not be easy. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Lovington, I want to encourage you and tell you this. Don't pray for an easy life, but pray for strength to face a difficult life. That's what you need to do. Because if you want to get there, that's how you can get there. Listen to me, baby girl. You, my friend there, you want to be a successful girl with success. And let me tell you, success is not how you dress. I see young girls today, when they dress in a certain way, guys tell them, you look sexy. You God. Do you know that's an insult? When somebody tells you, you look sexy, like they're saying, do you want sex? But many of us, we say, thank you. It's only God. Keep on praying for me. You put God in things. God must not even be there. We are living in a time, Elder Busire today, that the things that we accounted shame in the past, they are counted as glory in our time. Why? Because we are losing him. We are so quick, beloved friend. Friends, as we are quick to get there, the biggest question is, are you so quick? Are you so quick? The relationship you are in today, how did you get it? Where are you so quick? The manners you have today, how? Where are you so quick? Was God's blessing there? Was it approved by divine intervention? Did God say yes or God was saying, I am not there? How quick were you in doing things, beloved friends? How quick were you because you left God and God was not there? How quick were you when God told you, wait him, I must do this thing for you? Somebody says, I cannot wait. God promised you, I'll bless you with a man. Be still. I know that I am God. You said, God, I know, I know where you became pregnant out of wedlock because you were so quick. God told you, wait, young man, I'll bless you with a wife that you live with. You said, God, no, you are delaying. You are so quick. Cohabitation came in, began to live with somebody. The question to them, are you living with a stolen property? What is it that you have? Jacob got a blessing. It was not his blessing. It was for Esau. There are some of us who are having things 
that are not for us. It's for somebody else. You know deep down your heart, this thing I have is not mine. I'm not supposed to have it. I rushed time. I went ahead of God because I could not wait. Why? Because I want to show every person I'm successful. Things are getting right. Some of you, because your wife had given you a challenge, instead of coming to the church for the pastor to counsel you, to tell you that it shall be well, my brother, you rushed quickly, got a girlfriend, impregnated her, another pregnancy. Now you are so shameful. Three children out of wedlock. You don't know what to do. Some of you, you were virgins. With all the virginity in this world, the church told you, you must remain a virgin. Keep on praying to God because now your friends had gone ahead of you. You said, mm -mm, I cannot remain a virgin. You are so quickly. You went and said, I must do it. I must test her. because people say when you do, you get to heaven. I wonder which heaven you get to, my friend. But get me right, it's because many of us are so quick. You are so quick, beloved friend. They told you the world is bad. Don't get there. The world will destroy you. The world will bring you to shame. You were quick. You wanted to test the life out there. Today, even the things of God have no tests. The music in the church has, you are a young man, but the music has no test. People sing the song, all the way my savior leads me. You, 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 it doesn't connect with you. Why? Because you are so quick. You have already gone out there. When they say, oh, my savior leads me, to you it's not good. But the moment you hear a song, oh, oh, namayang, you say, this is it, man. This is a psalm. You left God. You left him. Why? Because you are so quick. Are you quick, my friend, in the things that you do? Are you so quick, my friends, that the God gives you an instruction, but you don't want? The Bible tells me Jacob, because of what he did, he knew that his brother was coming after him. He ran and went out into a far country to the, to, 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 to the uncle, Laban, running away. There are many of us, because we have been quick, we are in a far country. I know many of us will read in the book of Luke of the prodigal son. There is a prodigal son in the Old Testament in the name of Jacob. Jacob. Jacob was a prodigal son. He claimed the blessing just like the prodigal son went to the father and told him, Father, give me part of my property. At least this one in Luke is asking, Father, give me part of my property. And the father gives him without any disguising. The father gives him without any lying and he goes to the far country. But this Jacob comes to the father and he asks for a blessing knowing that the truth of the matter, there is a lie. God the Father blesses him. And then because he knows trouble is coming, the Bible tells me he ran into the far country because he knew that things would let me tell you, my friend, in whatever you do in this world, if you think the world will have mercy upon you, the world will never have mercy upon you. One day, Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, when he won medals for the United States of America, they cheered him and said, he has brought victory unto the continent. He has brought victory unto America. And he thought now, because I've won medals, I'm a black man, the white people accept me. One day, he entered into a restaurant, and that restaurant that written, no blacks, but he's entering, saying, because I've won medals for them, I can enter in this one. When he reached there, they told him, we can't sell you, a black man. Muhammad Ali, with all the pen, he went to one of the rivers in the USA, and through the medals, he said to hell, people don't appreciate. Let me tell you, my man, you would want to please this world. This world will never appreciate you. This world will trod you down. The only man who appreciates you is Jesus Christ. In your weakness, he can lift you up. When nobody stands with you. He is a brother who sticks closer than a brother. When no one wants to walk with you, Jesus can walk with you. We take Jesus, take him and walk with him in the journey. Don't walk alone because if you walk alone, you keep on negotiating corners. But with Jesus, he has been there before. He has been there where darkness is around. He has been there where the devil crews unfriendly. He has been there to Calvary. That's why they say he has taken the journey of journeys, the journey of cover if there is success today is success on cover if there is success today is success on the cross on the cross there is there 
We can get there to the cross without lying to God, without doing all shortcuts. We can go straight to Jesus Christ today. You know how many shortcuts you have done in life. You know how your Christian life is not just. We are Christians, beloved friend, but because of our shortcuts, we have become photocopy Christians, the original copies in Jesus. When you get there, you find the copies there. Jacob has left back there. He is coming back. He knows when he reached there, he's tricked when he marries. He wanted to marry Rachel, they give him Leah. Let me get you right, to tell you, friends. Today, you have done things so quick. You have lied to your wife, but listen to me. They say you can lie to a woman, but women have 75% of life's answers. They're just asking you because they want the truth from you. When you lie, don't think they, they know that you're lying. They even say he's lying. But we keep on doing that. Jacob, you are strict. And you lie today, somebody will lie to you in the future. There is a time you will pay. You do things in darkness nobody knows. But remember, everything shall be brought into light. There is a time. Jacob thinks he's clever. He gets there. He wakes up in the night. He's, he does everything. Waking up in the morning, he opens. It's Leah. Many of us, we are doing things today in our dark corners. This is success. Opening It's not the success you chase. It's so dust, it's so brass, it's all stones, it's nothing. He goes to Laban, you lie to me. Laban says, no, you know the custom. The first one, the younger cannot go before the first one. Him is the younger, he went before the first one. In short, he's telling him, Jacob, the tricks you did there cannot work in this place. The things you do in certain places, they will never work. Jacob, now he has to labor for another seven years. There are some of us that will labor and will be punished, not because of anything, because we are so quick in our dealings. When he's done, he's coming back from there. As he's coming back, he has baggage, two wives. Things he never wanted, he's coming back from there. There are men of us that will come back with things we never wanted. Friends, to go in a far country is not to go to Kigali. To go in a far country is not to go to Zambia. The moment you give God a back, you're in a far country. The moment you stop praying, you're in a far country. The moment Bible study becomes boring, you are in a far country. The moment fellowship becomes a struggle, you are in a far country. Many men are in a far country today. And as they are coming back, they will come with baggage. I can't assure you of anything, my friend. Some of us will come back with diseases. Don't get me as a prophet of doom. Some might come back with one leg. Some will come back with nothing. Coming back as a prodigal son. Jacob, as he reached there, they tell him, Esau, your brother, is there. But he fears he might strike him. He says, no. He divides them. And the Bible tells me, as he approaches him, he knows he's scared. But listen to what happens, beloved friends. As that is happening, there is an angel of the Lord. When you have learned for your mistake, don't look for anyone in the church. Look for Jesus Christ. When you know issues of not being okay, don't go and say, it's you who did it. You are at fault. I could have not done it. Don't blame any person. Come to him and tell him, Master, you know me better than anyone. You know all the things I've done. You know what I wanted to do. But if you change Jacob, you can change me. The Bible says they wrestled. Wrestling! He thought it was nah, this strange man wrestling. Maybe thinking it's a brother. Wrestling, fighting, fighting. Says, leave me. Says, I'll not leave you. And you bless me. And the question is, what is your name? My name is Jacob. Jacob means a con man, a crook. He says, from today, you know I'm going to be Israel. Beloved friends, as we close, God wants to change somebody's name. God wants to change somebody's character. God, you have been quick, but he wants to change your situation. The God I worship is a game changer. He can change your name. He can change your name is not the name you are called, that you are Nyabuto, you are your Omulo. Your name is not the name you are called to say you are Mag. The name is your character. 
The name is the life you have been living. Somebody, God wants to change that name. Forget about this life we come to show on Sabbath. This is just a show of character, a social character. There is a spiritual one. God wants to change. You are a young girl. God knows you. How many men you have slept with. God knows you, that you are so quick because you don't care what you want to do. When Esau came, he cried because the blessing was gone. There are some of us, because of where we are, we have broken people's hearts. You know the people you have broken. You know the people you have hurt. You know the people who are this time not living a good life. People, even when they see you, they wonder, is that an elder? Is that a leader? This is what he has done to my life. But don't worry. Jesus can change your name. He can give you a name. There is a man called Jesus. He is there, the man called Jesus. He can change your name. He changed Jacob. He changed Paul. He changed the prodigal son. Jesus is in Lovington today. And I pray, beloved friends, when you look at your life's history, when you look at things you have been quickly today, you come to him and tell him, oh, to Jesus I surrender. Lord, help me to know my weaknesses. Lord, help me to take them to Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to have boundaries in life that they are places I cannot cross. Lord, help me to have good friends, friends that will tell me the story of Jesus. Lord, help me and teach me to pray. Lord, help me that the Bible becomes the textbook of my life. Lord, help me. You know me. Loving to me, know me, but Lord, you know me. Is there somebody today? Is there somebody today who is saying, Lord, I have been so quick, but like Jacob, I come. Change me. Change me, Lord. If you are there, my friends, there's room at the cross. Think. Just come. Maybe in the house, you're not that man that your wife says I had because you have been quick with things. There's room at the cross. You can come. I want to make an appeal. You can be up there, you can be down. Pianist, all to Jesus. Sorry, I've wandered far away from God. Is there somebody in this place today who wants to say, God, I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you there, my brother? Are you there, my sister? Come to where you are. You know your situation, you know your life. It's not anything about any person. It's about our lives. Would you come, my friends? There's room at the cross. There's room at the cross. You are a man, but you are saying, I've been so quick in my dealings. If you are there, my friend, I want you to come. There's room at the cross. Room at the cross of Jesus Christ. Come just the way you are. God will bless you. God will give you a name. God will change you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody again? Come the way you are. Are you there, my friend? There's room at the cross. Come to Jesus Christ. You might be a sister. Come. Don't sit there. Jacob never sat. He says, I'll face my challenges. I'll face my issues. Loving tone, we have to face our issues. God bless you, my sister. We have to face our issues. Face your issues today. Face them. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Face your issues. Face your situations. Keep on coming. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. Face your situations. God bless you. Keep on coming. Don't sit down, my brother. It's time to come to face our situations. Keep on coming. God bless you. Don't, don't sit, baby girl. You can come today. Jesus wants you to come. God bless you, mama. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. There's room at the cross. You want to make that decision, friends. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. God is there to bless you. Keep on coming. God bless you, my brother. There is room at the cross. You can come. We are waiting for you. Keep on coming. This is the time. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister there. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody? God bless you, my brothers. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. God bless you. 
God bless you. Come, come to the, come, come. Beloved friends, you may come, you may come. There's room at the cross. Now I'm coming home. Now I'm coming home. There's room at the cross. Come just the way you Keep on coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. You can come, my friend. There is room today. There is room today. Come at the feet of the cross. Come in. Keep on coming. Bless you. Pianist, just a, just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Today it has been Amo Day. There are men that have given problems to their wives because they have been so quick. You know yourself, my brother, that woman has suffered. They said the character of a man is known in the health of the woman. Some women have pressure and stress because of you. Today you are saying, God, change my name. Change my character. I want to treat that woman with a deserve. Maybe you have not been a problem, but you want a change that a woman will see a difference, excellence in the house. I want to invite you to come as well. Just come. Unless if you don't want to change, are you content with what you are? Your woman is looking at you right now as I'm preaching, saying, that man, why can't he stand honestly? Yanu kichwangu mutu ameka atanaskia. She's looking at you. There's room at the cross. You are a woman there. But you're saying, I want God to help me to become that woman that will bring peace and love in the house. I want us you to come. God bless you. Just come. Come. If you are coming as a woman and you see your husband is closer, just come and get his hand. You come together to show some unity. If you want to be prayed for as a couple, you are seated there, maybe it's far, just come and pick him, we'll pray for you. We are not saying there's any problem, but you're saying we want the success and success with God, success with Jesus. Do I see women coming to pick their husbands? Some of these men are not married yet. Are you guys married? Huh? Are you married? If you know that your husband is here, please come and get him. I I'm serious on this. Come and get him. God bless you. If you know your husband is here, come and get him. They are feared to be taken now. They want to come by them. But if your husband is here, please come and get him. Show some love. Hold him by the hand. Just come and hold him by your hand. We pray for you. Your man is here. God bless you. I can see somebody coming. Just come, beloved friends. Where are the wives here? Wives, please. Your husbands are waiting for you here. I want to pray. Is there any, any wife who is coming? Is there any wife who is coming? Are we seeing any wife coming? Thank you, I can uh, see. Any wife come to pick your man? I ask the congregation to be upstanding. As you are coming to pick your man, pick your man. Come and pick your man. Come and pick your man. If your man is here, come and pick him. We'll sing the first stanza and last stanza choristers. Oh, my Savior leads me. Then we are going to pray. My Savior leads me. Choristers.
pray. Father, today, what a lesson. What a story of Jacob. Seated and standing today in the church, many of us are Jacobs. So quick with life. So quick to get what we want. A generation, Lord, we have lost the patience. A generation we can't hear from you anymore. A generation which cannot be instructed by you, but we want to walk our own ways. Like Jacob, we have gone in a far country, thinking we are safe there, but yet even the people we meet there, we have never taught them our secret of escape. There are many of us today, Lord, that are here that are keeping secrets from our wives, secrets from the church, secrets from any, every person. Why? Because we have been so quick with life. Father, just like the way you change the name of Jacob to Israel, my prayer today, change us, Lord. Give us a name that if need in society, it's never praised, but it shall be praised by your name. Give us a name, even if in this world it's not known, but it shall be known by your name, by your kingdom. I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ for that marriage that is on the rock, because the man has been so quick. Decisions that are taken to bring jeopardy, to bring destruction, to bring hurt and pain to that wife. Lord, I pray because there is a woman that has cried in this church. Wipe her tears, my father. You can wipe her. There is a man who has cried because of mistreatment. You can wipe his tears. Lord, we are gathered here, but you know the secrets that happen in our houses. We are quick to show a different picture to society, but the truth lies with us. I pray, Divine Father, have mercy upon us. There are your people who have come. Some want to get baptized. Some want, it's a commitment of renewal. You, Heavenly Father, who accept even those who do dubious means and shortcuts and accept them in your kingdom, accept them, Lord, and change them, my Father. Give them a new name. I know when they left home in the morning, they had a different name. But when they go, may they have a name stamped with the blood of Jesus Christ. May you bless each one of us. We continue today on this men's day. Help us to be men. Men with God, not success with shortcuts. Help us, Lord, and bless us. It is in Jesus' name I pray. there. We just meet you behind there. Everyone, there. thank you. God bless you. The elders will be there. People are there to receive you. Just two minutes. God bless you. Let's all get there. God bless you. Let's all get there, my brother. Let's get there.
Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Are we blessed? We thank Pastor for his ministry. Um, I urge all of you to be seated here at 2.30 this afternoon. We are going to have a wonderful panel discussion on mentorship. And then Pastor will do another short service in the afternoon. You'll do well to be here. We are going to have amazing uh, singing. You have not seen the end of Adventist Men Choral. Our choir is yet to sing. The team here are yet to unleash what they are capable of. And many other singing groups are planned for this afternoon. So you will do well to you will do well to be there in the afternoon. Uh, the youths are being requested to meet for um, lunch at the tent. The Kileleshua, the forms that were being given, were finished. There are some at the door as you exit. Kindly pick one. Adventist men, tomorrow we meet at 7 o'clock for prayer breakfast for all men who are here. Again, Pastor will speak to us as we launch and start the, uh, the ministry for the, the, the youth and the men mentorship program that runs for the next 12 weeks. So see you in the afternoon. May the Lord bless you. The choristers, you can, you can uh, disperse us as we, as we leave. Thank you.